But a commentary is coming from Paisley. What a match that could be as well. It's St Mirren against Aberdeen. All the action with Willie Miller, Stephen Thompson and Liam McLeod. And what a magnificent opportunity this is for St Mirren to go outright top of the Premiership. Yes, it would just be after three matches. But what a superb place to be in for Stephen Robinson's men. Currently sit fourth with that game in hand. And if they do win this, they'd be two points clear at the top of the Premiership. What an achievement, even this early in season 23-24. Up against an Aberdeen team that's only won one of their last eight games here in Paisley. Indeed, their record since St Mirren moved into this stadium back in 2008 is pretty poor. They've played 21 previous times inside this stadium. They've only won six of them. It's been a problematic venue for the Dons, who are going to kick this game off. St Mirren line up Hemming and Gold, Fraser Gogic, Taylor, Strain and Tanzer, Bacchus Boyd Munts, McMenamin and Kilty Olisanya, Aberdeen with Roos and Goal, Rubicic, McDonald McKenzie, Devlin Hayes, Shinny Clarkson, Polvara, Miovsky, and Duke. And those are the starting lineups for this one. Aberdeen toiled away from home last season. What can they do here? A uh, really pleasant day in Paisley as Clarkson rolls it all the way back to his goalkeeper from centre. And Kelarus with a long right foot ball. Aberdeen all in red with the gold flashes. St Mirren in their black and white stripes. And the Dons going right to left as we watch them up back at the top of the main stand. And it will be Saints shooting towards the north stand where the Aberdeen supporters are housed. It's an Aberdeen throw in down on this near side, midway inside St Mirren territory. It's bowled back to Angus MacDonald who makes his first start of the season, having extended his stay by a couple of years after initially signing that short-term deal last term. As Roos goes long, but it comes all the way through to his opposite number, Zach Hemming. It really has been an impressive start to the campaign by St Mirren when you consider their first game of the season was defeat at Lynx Park to Montrose in the League Cup, Stephen Thompson. It has been. It's been absolutely sensational. And um, I think... Their success, sorry, has been built on the foundation of hard work and organisation. They've got quality players as well. The signings have been brought in in the summer yeah. have been good as well. Strain finds McMenamin. In comes right. the first cross of the match into the Aberdeen box. And it's poor with a left foot and it sails behind them the other side of the goal for a goal kick. Yeah, I have to say, Willie, I'm a fan of this Aberdeen strip. Are you? Um, a little bunch of everything. He's a um, traditionalist. Yeah, pretty much. You, you the goal. He lifted, yeah. Gold. Yeah. He lifted yeah. a European trophy in red and white. I quite like it. Yeah, I, I, I can understand from uh, you, you know someone as fashion conscious as you <laughs> that you would like it, but I'm just I'm a traditionalist, so I prefer white. Okay, right, okay. Kelarus is all in yellow as he boots the ball forward from the goal kick. It's not a great delivery. It comes bouncing back off McMenamin, breaks to Slobodan Rubicic over on the far side to Devlin on the touchline, long with the right foot. Miovsky will give chase. Gogic will cover across. He passes it short to Taylor into the midfield for Kilty and then it's back with Gogic and it's a long right foot ball forward looking for Olesanya will be keeping a close eye on Olesanya he wins it back in the far side he's very quick as Stephen Robinson was saying he's managed a couple of goals this season including their second at Easter Road on the opening day of the league campaign a 3-2 victory and Alex Greaves scoring late on as Rubicic level the edge of the centre circle goes back to McDonald and it does look like it's the three at the back will he? Yeah, yeah, the early stages, it certainly looks that way. Um, you must have been seeing things, really, in the warm-up. No, I wasn't seeing things. Um, I explained exactly what, what I did see. Um, but as you rightly pointed out, I think it was a ploy. Um, okay. And they were maybe just practising their headers. Yeah. But it looks as though it's a three at the back. They might well move into that shape at some point today, depending on how the game goes. As comes off the head of Devlin and out for a throw. And what a fine goal Nicky Devlin scored the other night in Gothenburg against Hacken. Aberdeen 2-0 down and seemingly struggling, Barry Robson made the changes and they had the desired impact as they came roaring back to 2-2 with the second leg at Pataudry to come on Thursday live on BBC Scotland radio and television a busy European week Taylor loses out in the far side, John Beaton says he was fouled, free kick to Saints just perhaps inside the Aberdeen half over on the St Mirren left yeah, it was just Majowski kicking through the back of his calf to get the ball. I think it was a clear foul. John Beaton didn't hesitate to blow his whistle. 
Aberdeen only won five times away from home in the league last season. It's seven in the last 40 away games that they've only managed to win. So going away from Petardi has been a serious issue. Their record at home was excellent last season. They lost a handful of games, mostly to the likes of Celtic. As uh, Jack McKenzie takes a throw in level with his 18 yard line on this near side. We've got the new Finnish centre back, Richard Jensen, on the bench. Still no sign of Rhys Williams, who arrived on loan from Liverpool as McKenzie shifts it to Clarkson. He did arrive on loan from Liverpool last season and now a permanent fixture at Aberdeen as he finds Rubicic. And now it's with Polvara, the American with the long right foot raking ball forward, looking for Duke. Gogic slices it into touch for an Aberdeen throw in level at the edge of the D of the St Mirren box over on that far side on the side of the stadium that was the old North Bank when Saints played at Love Street. It comes to Pulvara, and then back to the right of the centre circle, Clarkson into it for McKenzie as he rolls it out to Hayes on this near side. There was a real purpose about Aberdeen in the last half hour of the game in Sweden the other night, and that is the kind of level that Barry Robson will be looking for for 90 minutes today, will he? It will be, um, you know, and it was impressive, uh, the, the, the changes that were made um, suited the team getting players into positions that they're more comfortable with, you, you know, particularly in the wing-back areas, getting, you, you know, proper wing-backs in there that can do both jobs, both go forward and defend. One ball from Rubicic into the similar in box, headed away by Marcus Fraser, and it's dinked back the way by Keelan Boyd-Munts, scored that fabulous goal against Mother won the Cup last week and Simmerin have played it nicely out to this near side for Ryan Strain it's a long right foot ball forward for Olisanya to chase McDonald's a covering Aberdeen player he gets there first and just hoisted out for a throw in on this near side to Saints about level with the Aberdeen six yard line no early goals thus far here in Paisley five and a half goalless minutes in and it remains goalless at Dens where Dundee are hosting Hearts you'll go to Stephen Craig and whenever something happens there uh, Simmerin come forward on the right hand side back it's a really good ball into the box there's no real purchase in the header from Kilty and it's an easy take for Kelarus who holds on inside his six yard box but that's the first real good attacking piece of play in the match inside a, inside a penalty area and it was Simmerin who were threatening Tomo yeah, it was. Uh, Bacchus taking the ball from the throw-in, turns inside, gets to the byline, clips it up. Kilty's not the biggest, but he rose really, really well, but he just couldn't get enough purchase on his header. Uh, and it's going to go wide in the post anyway. But the, the, the initial th throw-in came yeah. from the type of ball that uh, Stephen Robinson was talking about before the game, a channel ball for Oyusana to go and chase and try and exploit. And that is a, a ball that we're going to see all afternoon in yeah. behind the uh, uh, wing-backs of... Aberdeen. But, but from the throw-in, it was poor defending from Aberdeen to, you know, to allow the cross to come in. And, and for me, I think Kilty should do much better. Hayes goes long. Miofsky gives chase. Gogic is there. He nods it back to his goalkeeper. As we might see Alex Gogic in Cyprus colours up against Scotland. And uh, it'll be a week on Friday, won't it? The next Euro 2024 qualifier. The, first international break of the season as Hayes wins a throw-in for Aberdeen over on this near side. Tom St Mirren looking for a third successive win at the start of the league season. They haven't managed three successive wins at the start of a top-flight season since 1948. <laughs> Have you then? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, that just shows you they're on their own right now. They've, I mean, they've done it in lower league yeah. in the championship yeah. and first division as it was. Yeah, I would also put them top of the league. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... I'm not going to jump the gun, but it would be a, a sensational start to the season. But as Stephen Robinson said in his pre-match, certainly it is. So they won five of the first six of that campaign. As Bacchus picks up in the midfield, fouled by Shinny. At least that's what he thought. I think the referee was going to blow, but Simmerin retained the ball anyway. It's played forward, Kilty. And then Boyd Munts out to that left-hand side for Scott Tanzer. Back to Boyd Munts. The Northern Irishman from Belfast. Out to the left-hand side, rolled down the line, but... Tanzer can't keep it in play and it goes out for an Aberdeen throw-in which Rubicic will take so Mirren have started the brighter you would expect that they're the home team and they've been excellent here by and large over the last 12 months maybe even longer yeah they have started well I mean Aberdeen seem to be going really quite direct long a lot of the time trying to use maybe Duke's pace and, but St Mirren's back three have just been lapping up all the long balls that have been thrown up there I think both teams have yeah. been doing that though yeah, you know, I mean, but, you know it's, yeah. it's kind of a back to front uh, early doors in this game 
Olisanya inside the centre circle, fouled by Clarkson, submitting free kick, Olisanya takes it quickly, rolling it to the right hand side for Strain, it's a real sign of intent, Strain, they're going to return it to Olisanya, he oh. does get there, he goes down, Johnny Hayes was the covering Aberdeen player, as it goes behind for the goal kick. Well, you could see what Olisanya's trying to do there, he's desperately trying to get between the man and the ball, if he's not going to keep it in, he's going to try and win a, a penalty. Well, he gets there first, and there's 100% contact. He ends up in the, the billboards behind the the uh, touchline. I wonder if this will go to VAR for a wee VAR check. John Beaton had a good look at it before he made his mind up. I, I didn't see it myself in terms of being a penalty. I think there was contact, but it was, you know, two players going for the ball. I think it was body, shoulder contact. Uh, Olisania went down. He seemed to slide the into the billboards at the back of uh, the, the, the touchline there but nah, it's not, going, it's not getting checked and I uh, didn't see it being a penalty to be perfectly honest Yeah, there's no official stoppage in play so no penalty Ewan Anderson's the VAR today for this one Come on Ewan Long ball from Roos out to the right hand side breaks into the midfield Clarkson with the cushion header forward to Shinney out to the left hand side for Hayes look to return it to Shinney but he's given it away to Bacchus who gets it back there from his countryman strained down this near side, McMenamin, the challenge from Clarkson. And it goes out of play for a throw into Aberdeen. On this near side says the main stand side assistant Douglas Ross. And it's an Aberdeen throw in which Jack McKenzie will take. Aberdeen yet to really settle in the match, it remains nil-nil. We've played ten minutes. And McKenzie over, it's still nil-nil, Dundee Hearts at Dens. Here's Duke, switching the play, he's done it well, looking for Devlin, but... The bouncing ball favoured Tanzar, Devlin then fouls Tanzar, I think, and that'll be a free kick to St Mirren. If it's not a free kick, it'll be a throw in to St Mirren over on the far side. Looked like a free kick. Yeah, he's given a free kick. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought Devlin he just didn't read the, 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 the curl of the ball in that case. It was a sensational crossfield pass from Duke, must admit, and uh, Devlin should have been onto it much quicker, uh, you know, in attacking uh, Tanzar rather than allowing the initiative to be had by the St Mirren player. So to play for a throw-in on the near side though for Aberdeen on the opposite side, Saints couldn't make anything of it over there. Jack McKenzie will take this one as well as he bowls it in to Shinney, back to McKenzie. Long ball McKenzie, but it's easy for Taylor, at least it should have been, he's given it straight to Dante Pulvara in the centre circle. Now it's out wide right for Devlin. Devlin taking it down the right-hand side, looking for space to cross, plays it off the defender, and Tanzer's done really well. Not once but twice against Devlin, cut out the cross, then won it back when it ricocheted between them. As Shinny rolls it back into his own half for Rubicic. It's now in the midfield. Polvara midway inside the Zimmer in half. Right foot low ball along the grass to Hayes on the near side. Showed way too much of it to strain. Who wins the throw-in off Johnny Hayes? He looks a little bit off the pace. He has been out, of course. He was injured, I think it was that opening game against Livingston he picked up the injuries, been on the bench as an unused sub since then but that was a really heavy touch, really poor from Hayes which uh, was most unlike him the throw in to be taken here by the Saints skipper Marcus Fraser and the continued absence of Mark O'Hara it is Strain nicking it off Hayes out for a throw in to Saints it's scrappy down there at the moment. This will be about midway inside their own half here for St Mirren on the main stand side. Strain leaves the ball for Fraser to take. Yeah, there's not been a great deal of good football played so far. It's been quite frantic, a lot of turnovers of possession. St Mirren probably just shading it. Certainly had the best opportunity so far. Well, Asanya does well. Strong wins the free kick as he's brought down by McKenzie. Strain happy to take his time over this one. He had some the unsettling moments in Gothenburg on Thursday night to Jack McKenzie of course gave away the penalty it was a pretty harsh one you would have to say I suppose the handball rule nowadays is it's such an easily punishable offence and St Mirren prepared to take this free kick on this near side strain with the right foot into the Aberdeen box it comes it's won by St Mirren heads over the crossbar and that will be a goal kick it's Richard Taylor who threw himself at it he couldn't keep the header down and it stays St Mirren nil Aberdeen nil here in Paisley after 13 minutes and it remains goalless between Dundee and Hearts it, it does and you know we're hoping that some football is going to break out at some point in this game I think it is way too frantic um, you know I think uh, 
the, the players, both sets of players are taking the easy option, just be playing the ball longer. Might be a tactic that Stephen Robinson wants to uh, employ, uh, you know, to get it in behind the Aberdeen uh, back uh, three. And of course, Aberdeen with Duke and the pace that he's got as well. Seem to like that uh, that long ball too, but uh, I'm not uh, I'm not enjoying it too it's not much a good so game. far. No, it's not been it's a terrible game so far. It's not been great viewing. It's Nicky Devlin just landed awkwardly in that challenge with Scott Tanza there clutching his back. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, he was uh, delighted, especially delighted with his goal the other night because of the mistake that helped cost them the game against Celtic a couple of weekends back. It was the header back towards his own goal he didn't realise Kyogo Furahashi was behind him and Aberdeen had got themselves back in level terms in that game at that point before Devlin's brainstorm It's a good signing from Aberdeen though because of his versatility as well you know if you've got an injury in the, the back four he could step in you know as today he's playing right back more yeah. suited probably to centre half as well but Great play by Bacchus, outside of the boot, finds Olisania, right-hand side of the box, leaves it back to Strain. Strain looking for space, chops it onto the left side, but still with the right foot, it's a poor cross. Povara gets it away, now it's with Miofsky, but it's in back well by Fraser. He read the danger and helped out his middle men and puts it back to his goalkeeper. And it's long from Zach Hemming. McDonald with a challenge and Olisania, both go down, no free kick. It's cleared by Aberdeen, Duke chasing, but... Tanzer's there to prod it back to his keeper. It's with Hemming now. So Sabinin are probably the team trying to play the football right now. As uh, Hemming goes long out to this near side, Olisanya jumps a little bit too early, comes off McKenzie, breaks back to Olisanya here from Kilty. Kilty on the overlap, McKenzie with a sliding challenge, puts it out for the throw-in. To Saints on this near side, about level with the Aberdeen penalty spot. This goalless game at Sabinin Park. Almost on 16, strange cross ball, comes off Clarkson, onto the chest of Tanzer, Kilty holding off his man, but it's just nicked away from him at the last, but it does break to Strain, who dinks the ball into the six-yard area, but it's an easy take for Keller Roos. He thought there was somebody towards the back post as Aberdeen give it away. Here's Taylor now down the left-hand side, taking on his man. Duke gets between the man and the ball. He's trying to see it behind, he hasn't managed that. Taylor wins the corner. Brilliant play from the centre-back. <laughs> It was, I mean, you weren't expecting it. He does this step over and drives between two Aberdeen players. Duke gets back. I think Duke was looking for a foul, uh, as were the Aberdeen supporters behind the goal. But uh, really good play from Richard Taylor, winning St. Dern, a corner kick. It was. It was dreadful from Risto, wasn't it? The yeah. throw out, he's trying to pick Duke out. It's intercepted. Wonderful work from the St. Dern centre-back goal. Saints corner, Saints chance, in from Strain, headed away by Duke. He will be picked up on this right-hand side by McMenamin. On the left foot, bends another ball in on top of the Aberdeen keeper. He doesn't get there, but the whistle goes. Standard. Yeah, it kind of bounced off him. And listen to the big number nine to my left, who's having a go at the goalkeeper union there. Yeah, you just touch a goalkeeper, it's a foul. Although, what I, would, I would say that one did look a foul, but in general, if you jump a goalie, it's curtains. That's it, the goalie's getting the foul. But that one was a foul. Aye, I'll give you that Okay. One. I'll give you that Keller Roos will take the goal or the free kick for Aberdeen as good as a goal kick and uh, the Dutchman with the right foot will launch this one forward across the halfway drops down towards Polvara who heads on Gogic is there he gets it clear into Taylor now to the left for Tanzer Simirin getting into their stride here low ball forward to Kilt he's got Olisania McMenamin ahead of him down the left hand side He's got the overlapping Scott Tanzer. He's got his cross ball in as well. Flicked away off the six yard line by Aberdeen, just as it looked as though it might drop to Lasagna. Here's Fraser. Find McMenamin and Jack McKenzie clear. He gives it straight back to Fraser. Here's Strain. Strain right footed into the box. Lasagna goes after it. And Angus McDonald left it. And Greg Kilty's left beating the pitch in frustration behind the goal. Because if he gets any touch, he probably puts St. Mirren ahead. Angus McDonald gets away with one big time. It stays nothing each in Paisley. Yeah, but was it a shout? It looked as though Angus McDonald was going to take control of the situation there. He did have a little look over his shoulder. I think perhaps he got a shout from Roos to uh, ask him to leave it. But Kilty, I think he, he just has to time that and just has to get 
a bit of his head on it and it ends up in the back of the net I think he was surprised surprised yeah. to see it <laughs> kind of going through to him but he must have only been an inch away from it any type of contact and it's 1-0 no something some Aberdeen subs going to warm up Jamie McGrath one of them formerly of this parish good player yeah, he scored 17 goals and he was threatening one of your goal scoring seasons here at one point did he eclipse it? Did you manage yes, 18? No, six, 16, 16 was your 16. best one, was it? Yes, thanks, Lee. The midfielder topped that, did they? Yeah, it's 16 in the mark, I know easily. <laughs> Sports sound here in BBC Radio Scotland as Kelarus with a right foot ball. Forward, it comes off the head of Strain. Nods it forward to McMenamin. And then clips it in field for Bacchus. Under pressure from Shinny, goes back to Hemming. Who boots it forward with the right foot. Who boots it a little bump. On Kilty, the Saints fans not happy with it. John Beaton was. As Olasanya holds off McDonald, he's done well. He's he's playing well, getting a chance in the team ahead of Mikko Mandron today. Up front for Saints as Tanzar goes down that left hand side, taking on Devlin, chopping in field, and then he overhits the pass to the outside of the boot for Kilty, and behind for the goal kick. It's Simmerin nil, Aberdeen nil. Almost in 20 minutes here, nil nil at Dens remains. Dundee against Hearts and Willie Miller there only appears to be one team wanting to play football out there at the moment yeah Aberdeen haven't started um, you, you know they haven't really made an effort I don't think to uh, build it up from the back it's been uh, very much uh, just direct football I've not been impressed yeah, with Aberdeen at all yeah no really. they haven't they haven't started um, Stephen I, I totally agree with you uh, they need to try and get the ball down and make some passes defensively they look a lot a little bit out of shape as well um, you, you know I think McDonald just being back in, uh, 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 in the team and I was expecting him to play to the right hand side and Rubicic to be central but it's Rubicic that's to the right and, and not being particularly impressive so far in the game McMenamin it's a heavy touch but he makes it work pushes it, pushes it back to Gogic out to the right for Strain he sweeps it back to Alex Gogic into the centre circle now it's with Boyd Munts long with the left foot out to the far side for Tanzer controls and passes it infield for Kilty Back to Taylor and infield to Boyd Munts. And then back to Richard Taylor. St. Mirren can go top of the table, two points clear with a win. They're playing like a team that knows that that's the prize. Out to the left, Tanzer bends the ball in, it almost fell to Bacchus. It does break back to Strain, who shoots blocked. There'll be an offside here, surely. Bacchus turns it home and the flag does go up. He was clearly in an offside position when the shot from Strain was hit initially because he was up there attacking having missed the opportunity just before then he's having a go at John Beaton but if he is onside the VAR will clearly yeah. overrule it he looked off I have to say but St Myrna causing Aberdeen a lot of problems with cross balls I said it before the game it's one of St Myrna's biggest weapons Bacchus arriving late into the box here they are but checking it it's, there is an official check he looked a mile off he looked a mile off Certainly, what I thought you stuck it in the net. And we're just checking to see. Yeah, no go. Yeah, and back is still having a go. But what's the point? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the, that that is the the one thing that VAR gets spot on, really, isn't it? The offsides. Yeah, there's no discussion with the offsides. You actually didn't need VAR. No, for you didn't. That one. You didn't. You didn't. It is Kellerus for the right foot, long ball forward. It remains nil nil. Then here, as it does in Dundee. Header from Taylor into the midfield. Shinny's header back towards the St. Mirren box. There's Clarkson. He's a footballer. If we can get him on the ball, maybe a different kind of game for Aberdeen. But the it's Dons have been desperate so far. They've had no control in the middle of the park. I mean, I, I can't think Shinny and Clarkson have really been on the ball at all. Povara from Clarkson on the right. Povara's cross takes a deflection, headed away. Cut breaks to the edge of the box. Hayes up into the air, misjudged by Bacchus. St Mirren have worked it out again here Strain on the near side challenged by Colvara and out it goes for a St Mirren throw in on this near side it's just all too frantic isn't it Aberdeen are, are, are chasing everything down but see when you've got that kind of a mental approach to it it's really difficult I think once you get possession to actually calm yourself down Aberdeen don't seem to be able to calm themselves down to get any control of the ball Lane Clarkson is a very very fine uh, midfield player and he's been non-existent so far this afternoon He's just not getting on the ball. It's out of play for a throw in. St Mirren have it in Aberdeen territory again, midway inside it. Strain with the throw. He's been a fabulous player for St Mirren. They'll be really good, Liam. They'll be hoping that the, he's still here this time next weekend because that means he'll be here at least until January. 
Yeah, I'd imagine there'd be a few clubs looking at him. He's been really good. Bacchus gets the headlines because he was at the World Cup last year and he played at the World Cup, but strain has been outstanding for Saints. Marcus Fraser was the right back before. He's had to play in that back three since his arrival. He's been that impressive. Got a quarter of this. And we await the breakthrough. Strain gets the ball into the Aberdeen box. It's away. Hayes helps it on its way to this near side. And Marcus Fraser tackles the his foot stuck in the boarding. His, yeah, his, his foot stuck. stuck. <laughs> oh, dear. He's OK now. He's got it out. <laughs> that could have been even more embarrassing if he's not able to get his foot out. <laughs> he was stuck between the actual advert and the concrete wall behind it. Oh, dear. And as Boyd Munts for St Mirren rolls it forward, Rubicic with the challenge. It's a foul though on Kilty. And St Mirren have a free kick. The problem is Aberdeen are playing a long ball game, but the problem is the long balls are all coming back at them immediately. Well, they're not favourites to win them against Taylor and Gogic. That's the reason. And this near side, McMenamin up against Hayes. Sells him the dummy, gets the cross, it's blocked. Bouncing ball, Shinny prevents the corner, flicking it over his head. Looking for Duke on this near side. Duke does get the header onto it, but only for Marcus Fraser's benefit as Miofsky slides in. Does really well. He's having to come all the way back into his own half to get a piece of the action. Clarkson, lovely touch away from his man. He gets a break of the ball through the legs of Boyd Munt. Clarkson driving up to halfway for Aberdeen. Knocks it forward, but even he can't find a teammate for the pass. The whole Aberdeen team is toiling. This became infectious, hasn't it? Poor uh, passes forward. I thought that uh, Clarkson was going to show his quality in that occasion, uh, but eventually just a, a poor pass forward after some excellent work. Um, but no, it's, it, it's been a difficult one for Aberdeen. I think uh, St Mern have, have tracked them down, not given them any room. But I think, you know, they're, they're masters of their own downfall. Uh, the, the, the Dons are not trying to build it up from the back. Everything seems to be launched long. And, and Stephen's right, you know, you've got my off game, Duke. I don't think they're going to be your main target men up there for no. aerial bombardment. They've not got that type of player. I mean, if you're going to be playing the ball over the top of the centre-halves... McKenzie. Foul. Yeah, foul yeah. on... I think it was McMenamin, yeah, down on this near side. A really poor challenge from Jack McKenzie. He's I mean, missed time he completely, completely. completely missed the ball, and yeah. instead of kicking the ball, he's kicked McMenamin. And St Mirren have a free kick now, just to the right of the Aberdeen box, almost bang level with the penalty spot. We are going to get an update from Stephen Cragen at Dens in just a moment. Maybe we'll let this free kick be taken first, and Stephen can give us a considered opinion of what he's been watching in the opening 25 minutes or so at Dens Park. We're 26 in here in Paisley, and it's a St Mirren free kick. And they've got two over it. Keelan Boyd Munts is there, so to Ryan Strain. It looks like it's going to be Boyd Munts to take, though. Chance here, opportunity knocks for St Mirren. In comes the free kick. It's a really good delivery, and Roos holds on. Only Sanya got the slightest touch onto it. And normally in that kind of situation, you see it end up in the net. Keller Roos holds on for dear life, and it stays goalless. It was a sensational ball in with a left foot. It really was not a really dangerous area. It was just the slightest touch. Oh, you Sanya got on it, and you're right. Normally you see that nestling the back of the net. Roos managing just to react quickly and get his hands on it. Best chance of the game so far, Willie falls to St Mirren. Uh, yeah. Um, that have really been no good chances. Yeah, real good opportunity. You could say that Kel Roos was in the perfect position to take yeah. uh, the, the, the header. I would say he was a little bit fortunate that it just was yeah, handed straight right to him. him. Yeah. Anyway, anywhere either side of him, um, he, he would have been struggling because it was. It was a really difficult one to defend again. Again, striker gets his head on it. The, you know, the Aberdeen defenders not doing their job properly. And if, if you wind it back, um, you know, Jack McKenzie's challenge was just so awkward. You know, but when you see defenders going in like that, I think it makes everyone round about him a little bit nervous. It is a similar in free kick. Strain takes into the Aberdeen box from just inside his. The Aberdeen half, cleared by Shinney. He comes off the head of Marcus Fraser. Out to this near side, McMenamin trying to keep it in play. He's done that as well, hooks it over his head. Here's Bacchus, forward McMenamin now. McMenamin evades the Hayes challenge. Clarkson wins it back. Hayes forward now with Duke on the ball on the near side. He comes off Bacchus, wins it back off Duke. And Fraser forward onto the chest of Olisanya. Challenged by McKenzie, they want another free kick. And on another day, that might have been given as well. As Duke goes down inside the St Mirren half, challenged by Fraser, out for a throw-in only. 
So only one team really in this one here. It does though remain goalless. Let's find out how things are going at Dens Park. Dundee against Hearts. Stephen Cragan. Well, I have to say, Liam, it's not much better here. It is nil-nil, I've got to say. Uh, both sides have been quite reserved out of possession, which is limiting the space for the opposition to play in. Look, McCowan had touched on at the start of the game. He's been a standout player. He's really dominated in midfield. I didn't think he would play wide in the right-hand side, but he's at the heart of Dundee's midfield. His vision, his awareness, his touch, his passing. Hearts look like a side who have made five changes from Thursday night. Lack of fluency, lack of rhythm. I think Tony Doherty will probably be the happier manager. It's nil-nil. Hearts have got a little bit of work to do. Some linen coming forward down the left-hand side of the box. Tanzer wins it back. In comes the cross from Boyd Munts, and it's a fairly weak header by Strain, which Kellarus holds on to. But that all came from Kellarus being charged down by Olisanya. It did, and he showed his pace that Stephen Robinson was talking about. Kellarus thought he had time. He didn't. It was brilliant play, actually, from all you Santa Claus. He's hurt down. himself, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I didn't actually see what happened to him for, to go down in the box there, but another cross comes into the box again. Smirn won the head, header this time. It was straining. It was a weak header again. I mean, I'm a, this particular St. Mirren say put really, really good deliveries into the box, and they've got to make more of those chances when they come around. That's probably three or four now that they've had kind of really tame headers on. Looks like you've got a bit of a crick in your neck there, Willie, because you're looking one way constantly. <laughs> it's off to the right because we're seeing no action in the St Mirren half at all. No, and, you know, I'm watching Barry Robson as well, and he's trying to get his players to calm down a little bit. I would wholeheartedly agree with that and play some football, at least try to play a little bit of football. But then you get the goalkeeper just dwelling in the ball too long, Bruce. There, you know, well, Sanya, you know he's quite, you know he's going to, you know, track you down. And it was... It was a good block. You're not talking about just a touch. He's got, you know, the full foot in front of the ball as well. And from that, the cross coming in, you know, players are not getting picked up either, poorly, uh, defensively. The setup's not working particularly well. I think Jack McKenzie's struggling a little bit down this left-hand side. I did say that when he's got to think about the game, then that's not when he's at his strongest. And he doesn't really have anybody to pick up. He's, he's really been ragged. Uh, and Stephen Wright from both sides good crosses into the box and Aberdeen struggling to defend looks like Alessandra's going to be okay he's just been receiving treatment while Willie was talking there it's going to be an Aberdeen ball when play gets back underway we'll just be on the half hour about to tick on to 31 and it's nil nil here on Sports Sound BBC Radio Scotland across the frequencies online on digital Wednesday PSV Eindhoven against Rangers the second leg of the Champions League playoff 8 o'clock kickoff 2-2 two -two after the first leg then on Thursday the Europa League of course Aberdeen hacking 7.45 it's a sold out Pataudry live across BBC Scotland and here on Sports Sound of course with uh, Pauk Hearts at 6.30 Villa Hibs updates 8pm kickoff for that one albeit Aston Villa 5 nothing up Aberdeen at 2-2 two -two, Hearts 2-1 two down Another big European night ahead. You're in the Premiership, 0-0 in the two matches this afternoon. Both kicking off at three. As Angus MacDonald rolls it with the right foot to the left for McKenzie. Turns away from Alessania, back to MacDonald. Low ball to Miofsky, back to Pulvara. Left-footed ball, it's high. It's aimed for someone in red. I'm not sure who it was. Shinny gave chase, was never going to get there ahead of... Strain and now Simmer and have it again. Boy Munts, lovely play. Rolls it out to McMenamin and two waiting in the middle. Kilty screaming for it. It is uh, McMenamin and across low ball, cut out by Rubidic and behind for the corner. And Greg Kilty's frustrated. He's still having a pop there at McMenamin and for not releasing him sooner. And he should have done. He really should have done. It was a great bit of play from St. Norman. the ball in the middle of the park. It's put out to McMenamin. He drives at the Aberdeen defence he, he wants to go to the byline but actually if he had lifted his head there was two options in the middle of the penalty box for St Mirren he wins the corner however there's been a goal at Dens Park we're going to go to Stephen in just a moment St Mirren have a corner first though left footed bent in the header tipped over by Keller Roos. let's get to Stephen Cragan Liam we say there's been a goal we're waiting on VAR to confirm the goal or disallow the goal I have to say it was an excellent play down the left hand side by Scott Tiffany he skipped past Ophaya inside the box he managed to spin round fizzed the ball across goal it ricocheted there was a shot and I think Zach Robinson may have got the last touch on it there was a slight delay it looked like referee Alan Muir had pointed for the goal then the referee's assistance flag went up so we'll wait to see we'll get confirmation from you in a moment Stephen then 
Simmerin corner, second one in quick succession after Roos tipped over the header. In from Boy once again, it's another good one, headed away. Breaks to strain, taking on Miofsky, goes down, John Beaton, yellow card out. The Simmerin player is going to be booked for diving. Now, it looked as though he might well have been fouled by Miofsky just before that, and I think he's obviously that's shown the seed in his head to go down at some point in the next challenge. Let's go back to Stephen Craig and at Dens for a decision well, on that the, Dundee goal. Well, the goal has been ruled out, Liam. Zach Robinson was about two yards offside, but really good play by Dundee. They're starting to build up momentum, but still nil-nil. Still nil-nil here, but only just Keller Roos with a wonderful piece of goalkeeping. It was instinctive goalkeeping as well, point blank to keep out the header. And then after that, Ryan Strain boot for diving. So sure that's Greg Kilty has had two headers yeah. at the Aberdeen goal. I, I mean, how how's that allowed to happen? You know, obviously they're, they're, they're not drilled well enough or they're not concentrating well enough at the set pieces, and that was a real opportunity. Another Big opportunity and big chance for Superman. Here comes Saints again. McMenamin down the near side, cleared by McKenzie. And it's going to be a throw in to Saints. Stephen Robinson is going to be furious if his team doesn't capitalise on this utter dominance. Yeah, it's all St Mirren and they've had the opportunities. They keep knocking on the door, but you're right, they've got to get the goal. Here come Saints, McMenamin, the Aberdeen defence stopped, waiting for a whistle that wasn't coming. In comes the cross ball. It's alive, it comes off a hand. That definitely came off someone's hand inside the six-yard area. It's Aberdeen clear. It's all very frantic. Here comes Saints again, cross ball comes in, McDonald makes a complete hash of it, at least it looked as though he did. He's actually got enough in the sliding block to get it to Devlin, who whips it clear with the right foot now for a throw in on the far side. Aberdeen are and now they're going to check for a penalty. Aberdeen are all over the place, Willie, defensively. Yeah. Every ball that comes into the box, you think Sitman are going to score. They should have scored on that occasion. It was all you saw. I don't know how he doesn't get anything uh, on the first ball in. He completely missed it. It was really difficult to see what happened with him because it looked as though it was right on his head. Uh, McMenamin just picks him out with a cross. Uh, but there was bodies in front of him. But they are, they're all over the place. They're ragged. They're not defending properly. Now, Barry Robson needs to sort that out, does he not? And St. Mirren on the attack again. McMenamin on the near side. This time McKenzie gets the block challenge in and out for a Saints throw in on this near side. And this has been... A really good first half performance by Saints into the final 10 minutes of the first half that we are, but it remains 0-0 as Duke is fouled by Bacchus. I mean, he'll wait to half time. <laughs> Clearly, I think Barry Robson, unless um, there's an injury at some point between now and the break, but he's going to have to change something because this is only a matter of time before St Mirren score here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a case of changing personnel or changing shape, um, but, you know, when your defence is looking as nervous as the Aberdeen back three are, and, and I include all three of them in that, to, you know, not showing any calmness whatsoever in dealing with balls coming into the box or players running towards them. Um, they look as though, you know, St Mirren um, can go by them with ease. Uh, Rubicic out on the right-hand side. McDonald is looking really ragged. Jack McKenzie throwing his boot up when really calmness was required. Uh, to give away free kicks and then you know St Mirren are getting opportunities from these free kicks and their deliveries have been wonderful as well Greg Kilty getting two headers on goal two it's been just all over the place for the away side both home teams have had the ball in the net but both disallowed and Dundee thought they'd scored against Tart Zach Robinson ruled out offside same here for Keanu Bacchus Duke under pressure goes down Povara wanted too long on it Boyd Munts nicks it off him sums up the first half for both teams that forward towards Olisanya McDonald deals with it and he's brought down by Olisanya and it's a free kick for Aberdeen at the edge of their own box 0-0 in both matches just having a look at the statistics 56% possession for St Mirren feels like more than that 6 shots to Aberdeen's 0 3 of them I've hit the target, three corners to zero. But nil-nil. Yeah, I mean, it, Aberdeen have looked poor defensively, but the, the biggest surprise for me is the lack of attack and intent from them. I mean, they have created nothing, absolutely nothing in the match so far. Apart from the wing-backs, similar to the same yeah. team that started the game uh, the other night, but the team that finished the game the other night was excellent, Willie. So yes, why was, not yeah. play that team? 
Yeah, well, it's perhaps going through Barry Robson's mind at this moment in time. Um, I think the worrying thing, if you're a St Mirren supporter, um, and there are a few in the stadium. That it's great I can turnout see. today. Um, really good. There was only, I think, there was fantastic. only something like three to five hundred tickets left yep. a, this morning. Great so, turnout. Yeah. Good atmosphere. Um, but they've had opportunities. They've had chances. You're right, Willie. And they haven't taken them yet. Yeah, it just looks great. I always thought that this place generates a, a good atmosphere when it's full, and it's another example of it. Well, the fans are turning out for St. Bernard. I mean, Aberdeen always... We're always top of the league. Out. If they're not going to come out now, they're exactly. not going to come out, are they? Exactly. But, uh, yeah, it helps when the away end's full as well, obviously. Yeah, as usual, a terrific away support for Aberdeen. And tick on to 39 in Paisley. Nil-nil here, nil-nil at Dens. A throw in for Nicky Devlin for Aberdeen. A bit level with the edge of the D of the St. Mirren box. Long ball. Rubicic with a header towards goal. It's nodded away by Bacchus. The Dick Turpin stuff of Aberdeen were to score here. It's Polvara. Lubitic just goes underneath his leg. He's able to retrieve the situation out wide in the right. Rolls it infield to Polvara. And then back the way to Hayes. It really is the League of Nations at Aberdeen these days. Cosmopolitan field to the squad. Long ball headed away by Taylor from inside his own box. Devlin trying to get there, but it's going to be launched onto the roof of the stand by Boyd Muntz. That's in the car park. And the new one straight back on. Well, that's not hit your motor, Stevie. <laughs> As it goes out for a throw, which Devlin will take, bowling it back to Rubicic. And then to McDonald in his own half. Keller, who's got away with a couple of really awkward situations in this game. He's also made a terrific save from Greg Kilty's header. To tip it over the bar to keep the scoreline blank. Rubicic with the right foot, dig ball forward. Then the right-hand side, Taylor gets in the way. Some winning player down, no free kick. Aberdeen have it with Duke. He loses his out. He loses out on the far side. Miofsky's down, watching his back. As Clarkson picks up the loose ball in the midfield. He's back on his feet now, and that's not run down well with the <laughs> St. Mirren supporters. He goes out of play on the far side for a throw in. I think John Beaton's given the free kick to Aberdeen, held by Taylor on Duke. This yeah. is probably the longest Aberdeen have had the ball in the St Mirren half consecutively in this first half. Yeah, they're finishing the first half well then. <laughs> <laughs> it's been dreadful from them. They've finally been up the pitch. They've shown no intent to pass the ball either. Um, their touch when they have, they try to make simple passes has just been awful. Uh, defensively, very, very poor. Um, looking really ragged at the back indeed. So um, I think Barry Robson will be delighted to hear the halftime whistle, get the players in and try to make some sense of this 40, first 45. Free kick, which Clarkson leaves to Hayes, and it comes, and it's gone all the way in! It's <laughs> incredible! Johnny Hayes with the free kick! Stephen Robinson is furious down there! He doesn't even think it was a foul! And Johnny Hayes' ball has evaded everyone, and it's bamboozled Zach Hemming on its way into the net to give Aberdeen, who've been horrendous in this first half, the lead just before the break in Paisley. St Mirren nil, Aberdeen won. Astonishing. Oh, quite incredible. Uh, you, you know, if, if it ends up 1-0 at half-time, the, the first 45 belongs to uh, St Mirren. But if Aberdeen go in with that goal of the lead, it'll be quite sensational from their point of view. I was I was saying that Barry Robson would be hoping at half-time that he could make some sense of the first half. There is no sense in the first half because we've been so poor. And yet they're going with one goal. Stephen Robinson getting the yellow card. He was raging. He thought that to the Taylor challenge and Duke was yeah. not a free kick, that Duke took a dive. He was he was up to the fourth official instantly when the free kick was given. You can imagine what it was like when that ended up in the back of the net. How many times have you seen that type of cross just evade everybody? Nobody goes for it and the goalkeeper just watches it sail into the back post. I mean Poor defensively from St Burns. Somebody's got to take charge here, whether it's a goalkeeper or a centre half. But honestly, how Aberdeen are one hell of here going into half time is astonishing. Johnny Hayes' first goal in more than a year. To be fair, the free kick, Willie, it's shades of that famous goal against Bayern Munich at Petardry in 83 on the way to the, the Cup Winners' Cup, didn't it? Because it looked like Clarkson was going to take it. He left it. Looked as though they were confused. And Johnny Hayes whipped it in and it's one nothing. 
Yeah, th there was a little bit of a confusion, or, or a little bit of confusion in the uh, St Martin ranks at the back. Uh, but, you know, Stephen Wright, someone's got to take control of that situation. I think a goalkeeper has got to take responsibility there. It lands, yeah. when it bounces before it goes into the net, it's quite close to him, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if somebody's going to get um, a touch on it, or if there's an Aberdeen player getting a touch, even one of your central defenders uh, getting a touch on it, and it goes by you, then fair enough. Yeah. That's what happens. But if it goes you know past everyone he's then got to read the flight of the ball he's got to take control of it and he's got to make the save well 1-0 Aberdeen I was just not long finished Tom we're talking about Dick Turpin and that is <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. commentator cursed it I can't believe it <laughs> outrageous stuff Honestly. that wasn't my fault yes it was throw in for St Mirren on this near side to be taken by Strain they will feel so aggrieved oh, there that they're is. behind here there's what I thought it was a half time myself <laughs> no. it's 44 minutes there'll be stoppage time as right, well Okay. calm down here is uh, Olesanya for St Mirren on this near side short to Strain to Bacchus digs out the ball to the 18 yard line headed away by Rubicic Shinny's it nicked off him by Bacchus here's McMenamin inside the penalty area McKenzie with the challenge out comes Hayes, knocks it off strain and out for an Aberdeen throw in. And little things like that going Aberdeen's way all of a sudden. I, you know, they're winning 1 0, and look at the supporters are absolutely buzzing. Uh, but really, if you're being honest, it has been one way traffic from about the 10th minute. Three minutes being bolted on to the end of this first half. 0 0, it remains at Dens. Dundee did have the ball in the net against Hearts, but it was ruled out after a VAR check 1-0 Aberdeen here These three minutes the confirmed by the fourth official Stuart Luke's board down below us bouncing ball, Duke chasing, Gogic gets there first, down the right hand side it's with McMenamin and then he gives it straight to Miofsky, I did say at the time that Stephen Robinson would have been concerned that they didn't take advantage of their dominance in this game, they didn't score I mean, they were dominant for 40 minutes of this. As McKenzie prepares to take a throw in just inside his own half on this near side. Looking for Miofsky. Lloyd Muntz gets his head onto it, finds McMenamin back to strain, whips it up into the air, comes off the back of McDonald and out for a throw into Saints on this near side. And then first half stoppage time here. A throw in taken by strain down the right hand side for McMenamin. McKenzie with a challenge, McMenamin's away from him though, to the byline, into the box, plays it across. It's a comfortable take of this near post for Kelleroos. The Samira nil, Aberdeen won here in Paisley. McMenamin does well, but again, her end is set up from Aberdeen from the throw-in. All too easy, allowing, allowing McMenamin to get to the byline. He just couldn't dig his cross out, gets it kind of stuck under his feet, and there was options in the middle of the box. It just shouldn't happen. It's too easy. Possession is gained too easy by uh, St Mern at that throw and you know, no communication between McDonald and McKenzie. And, you know, they're lucky to get away with it. Um, you know, if, if the winger, uh, McMenamin, had actually managed to get his head up and cut that back, then it's a big opportunity once again. Leighton Clarkson forward onto the chest of Miofsky. He leaves it for Shinny. Infield to Povara, back to Clarkson. Clarkson need to pick out a teammate. And he likes to just play the short ball back to Pulvara, out to McKenzie on this near side. Onto the touchline for Hayes, into the third and final minute of stoppage time that was added. Pulvara infield to Clarkson, back to McDonald in the halfway line, and then to Dante Pulvara on this near side. Forward he comes, ball infield to Miofsky, gets the break of Boyd Muntz. Into the midfield, Hayes finds Clarkson, back to McKenzie. And then to McDonald, suddenly Aberdeen are stroking the ball about. McDonald with the long ball, big switch out towards Devlin, won by Tanzer. I mean, Samira must be absolutely beleaguered as to what's happened here. Yeah, but you've seen it before. It's not the first time something like that has happened. Um, and we were speaking about how they had to capitalise on their dominance, and they didn't. Uh, and they may live to regret that. Thrown for Aberdeen, Rubicic, headed clear by Saints. Shinny picks it up, out to Devlin. Duke gives chase, keeps it in play down by the corner flag on the far side and wins his team a corner. Now, I make it that that's the three minutes played, but there's going to be time for this corner. And if Aberdeen scored a second here, it would be truly outrageous. They look stunned, I've got to say. Um, none look stunned. They can't believe it. 
Uh, it's, it's been the best spell for Aberdeen um, the last uh, four or five minutes since that goal went in. Um, very fortunate goal. Uh, but at the same time, you know, St Man haven't taken their opportunities. Aberdeen have been poor, but at least as though they're getting in at half time with at least one goal advantage. Well, he's with the corner towards the back post. Hemming beats it away with both fists. And then it's cleared by Greg Kilty up into the air. And there's the half time whistle. And it's half time at Dens 0 0. Aberdeen, though, with a lead here in Paisley. Quite how we don't know. Well, we do know because Johnny Hayes took a free kick that beat everyone. Cross ball into the box. And Zach Hemming didn't react and it ended up in the net behind him. That after complete and utter domination by St Mirren. Their best opportunity, a Greg Kilty header. Point blank save from Kelarus as he tipped it over the crossbar. Olesanya had a header saved and held by Kelarus earlier on as well. Keanu Bacchus had the ball in the net, but it was ruled out for offside initially, and then after the bar check, confirmed he was in an offside position. And St Mirren are going up the tunnel at halftime, rubbing their eyes in disbelief that the halftime scoreline here in Paisley is St Mirren nil, Aberdeen 1. On digital radio, FM, online at BBC Sports Scotland, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. Following Scotland's teams in Europe. The action continues on Wednesday evening with PSV Eindhoven versus Rangers. Sport Sound, Wednesday from 7. As a team, we're going there to get this job done and we'll give it everything we can. European dreams live here. It's an early ball by Dessers, chance of a dog. Listen on digital radio. Or play BBC Radio Scotland Extra. Looking forward to a big midweek in European football. Wednesday night, then that PSV Eindhoven Rangers game on the radio Thursday. Uh, well, we're off with Pauk against Hearts. We're on air at 6 o'clock. So it's a 6.30 kickoff for Pauk Hearts. Aberdeen Hacken, 7.45. There'll be commentary from both those games and updates too from that uh, somewhat forlorn hope of Hibernian. Now, of course, uh, without the management of Lee Johnson, who has been sacked today. Uh, that's also a 7.45 kickoff. And the Aberdeen Hacking game, a uh, sellout at Petaudry, is also live on BBC Scotland Channel from 7.30. It's live in the radio, live in the telly, and of course, coverage right the way through the course of the week of uh, all the football here. And uh, do listen out for the daily Scottish football podcast Monday to Friday, every day of the week, with uh, full details of uh, everything that is happening, all the big talking points, everything that is happening in Scottish football. So the half times in the two matches so far somewhat improbably. St Mirren nil, Aberdeen one. And here at Dens Park it is Dundee nil, Hearts nil. Let's hear a bit more about that one from Stephen Cregan. Yeah, I've got to say, Richard, it's actually been, you know, a good watch. I think we're more than anything anticipating something springing into life in the game. Hearts for me have looked a little bit off it. Uh, Dundee have set up well, their shape's good out of possession. I think they're allowing Kai Rolls and Frankie Kent to have the ball. They're not pressing them too much, they're allowing them to step forward. Once they make that pass forward, that's when Dundee are moving forward and trying to intercept that pass and play in the counter-attack. The front four of Lawrence Shankland and Vargas and Oda and Lowry, at times for me, have all been playing as individuals. There's been no real link-up play, no cohesion, and they look as if they're a little bit lost, not too sure how they're going to connect and make things happen for Hearts. Dundee, I've got to say, I have to be... Uh, they've been industrious. As I say, their shape's been good. They've been waiting to counter-attack from that shape. Scott Tiffany on the left-hand side has been a bright spark. We know he's a good ball carrier. We know he can take men on. He can take his team up the pitch. Luke McCowan, for me, has been a standout player. He just looks such a natural footballer. The, you know, he's comfortable with the ball at his feet. He's getting balls into Zach Robinson as a centre-forward or back of Yoko. He's playing little one-twos. He's driving forward from midfield. Uh, Zach Robinson, of course, had that goal disallowed. It was excellent play by Tiffany down the left-hand side. He skipped past a couple of players. Uh, Ofai, in particularly, fizzed the ball across goal, took a couple of deflections. I'm not too sure if it was going in or it had the pace to go in, but Zach Robinson stuck a leg out and just diverted it into the back of the net. Alan Muir, the referee, initially pointed for the goal, but in 10 seconds, the referee's assistance flag went up. It went to VAR, and I think he was about two yards offside. Tiffany also had a shot that went wide, I think... Um, Finley Robertson just towards half time 
worked with his left foot, fizzed it past the left hand post. But Hearts have had nothing really of note. Frankie Kent's had a couple of headers or a couple of possibility headers uh, from set plays. But Stephen Naismith will demand an awful lot more from his team. Tony Dockery will just ask for a little bit more composure in the final third. As I said, it's been a good game but without a lot of goal-mouth action. Yeah, that, um, the goal, I was rightly disallowed because um, actually Robinson was, was a couple of yards offside, but it was a bizarre scenario where the linesman never at any point raised his flag initially. He stood there with his flag down. He stood in line with where Robinson had put the ball in. It was almost as if he was waiting for a direction, and then he ultimately put his flag up, and then, of course, it was, we, we got the VAR, but very bizarre. I, th I think you're right, though. I think it's, it's a save for Xander Clark if Robinson doesn't get a touch, so he probably needed to do it. The other thing that... Um, has struck me throughout this. We spoke beforehand, Stephen, about the fact that Dundee were certainly competitive in their first couple of matches against Motherwell and Simmer and absolutely been that again this afternoon, haven't they? They have, and you know, sometimes it takes a player to instigate that, Richard, and you know, Cammy Kerr, for all his deficiencies or, or his deficiencies that people think he has, he's really combative. You know, he's fully committed, he's a Dundee boy, he's a Dundee fan, he's playing on that right hand side. There were a couple of challenges earlier when there the was, pitch was still wet. There was a yeah. couple of meaty ones, you know. Even when you know he's not going to win the ball, he still goes in at times and leaves a little bit on the opponent. You know, he's right in front of the fans and, and the dairy, as they call it over there. So they were getting behind him. And I think his teammates just kind of reacted from that. Um, Baki Yoko uh, up top has been a handful. He's been aggressive. I think Boateng in midfield has been snapping into tackles. Owen Beck, I said at the, uh, ahead of the game, I watched him against St. Murray. He looked a little bit soft. Today, he's got a little bit of bite between him a bit between his teeth so Dundee are really competitive Tony Dark will just want that little bit of composure a little bit of finesse I did say where will the goals for it come from where will the creative spark come from yes McCown is doing it a little bit deeper it's going to be Orlando and Scott Tiffany doing that but all around Tony Dockery will be pleased how things have gone he was probably pleased how they played against Motherwell overall probably pleased how they played in the second half against St Mirren they've only one point to show for it so we'll want some more this afternoon well, Hearts certainly have a lot to turn to in terms of strength and depth on the bench. They may have to go to that if they are to have a real impact on this game. In the uh, Women's uh, Premier League, SWPL 1, scores from earlier, Hibernian 2, Spartans 2. Spartans were 2-0 up in that one, had a player sent off, then conceded two late goals. Paddock Thistle beat Montrose by five goals to nil. It was Aberdeen nil, Hearts 2, and Celtic women have thrashed Dundee United by nine goals to nil. Hamilton away to Motherwell. The Lanarkshire Derby there will kick off in just a few minutes' time. And then at ten past four, live in BBC Alapa Rangers against Glasgow City, the first of the head-to-head -head titanic battles that will, you feel, go a long way towards deciding who will win the title this season between Rangers, Glasgow City and Celtic. So um, we'll keep an eye on those scores as uh, Sports Town continues. We've got live taking out commentary to come, of course, from Paisley, where the most improbable halftime scoreline, not just of this season, but possibly since Aberdeen won at Livingston, Willie, in a game you will remember very all too well, where they're absolutely <laughs> outplayed and shocking and somehow came away with a win. Uh, and they're halfway towards doing exactly the same thing at Paisley this afternoon. They are, Richard. It's incredible, you, you know, seeing a team that's uh, barely taken part in the game and has done just about everything uh, that they could do to uh, aid, aid um, the opposition and, you know, allow Greg Kilty, for instance, two headers at goal. Um, you know, Billy Shania got the header as well that was very fortunately taken by Kel Roos. Um, defensively, extremely poor. Looked very nervous, the three of them. Uh, not showing any composure whatsoever in trying to deal with a country of uh, St Mirren. Totally devoid of inspiration in midfield. And anonymous up front, two strikers having nothing to do at all. And you go in at half-time 1-0 up. I mean, it's just incredible. But I suppose at the end of the day, that, that's football. If you don't take your chances, and uh, St Mirren have had a number of them, a good handful of chances, uh, and, and even more opportunities than that, um, then, then you're always open to that, that sucker punch and, and dear me, what a, what a sucker punch it was from Johnny Hayes just a, a ball curled into the far post and the, ref, uh, the, the goalkeeper not taking you know, responsibility in dealing with it and it ends up in, in the back of the net it's quite incredible that we sit here at half time with Aberdeen having that one goal lead it's hard, hard to believe having watched that first 45 minutes well, absolutely. I've got to say, we've got a feed of it here. I've seen some of the action, but mainly concentrating what's happening here 
Uh, there's one thing I did notice, Stephen, was about, um, it was about the 36 minutes. So Liam mentioned it in the commentary, but he said there was, it was one of many scrambles in the Aberdeen box, and he said that there was a clear handball in there. I managed to see a replay of that. Um, just the one, but Angus McDonald's left arm, I think it is, is, is up. There's a shot now. It might be because it's at fairly close range, but the ball is going goalwards, and it clearly hits McDonald on the arm. Um, I was going to say somewhat perplexed that they are, didn't suggest either it was a penalty or that the referee have a have a look at that. Um, was a sense within the stadium that that was a, a big moment yeah, that that might have been a penalty? I think there was, yeah. Liam spotted it. Um, it was a bit of a stramage, but it definitely looked like it came off somebody's hand. Who as it was, it was difficult to see. Um, but yeah, if that is the case, we obviously don't have monitors here, but if it is the case, then it would be a surprise that it didn't go to uh, to the... Uh, I mean, this has been right up there with the Brinks Matt robbery. It really has. It's incredible to think that Aberdeen are 1-0 up in this match. They, they created, and when I say nothing, I mean nothing. Not a cross in the box, not a shot from 30 yards, not one piece of play where you would have said, well, that was good football. They've been completely dominated by sitting in that opening half. But, you know, I've played in games like that where you've battered a team yeah. and um, they they score out of nowhere and uh, it's, un, it's, it's unfair as it feels. You've got to react to it. And that's the big test for sitting in in the second half. As well as they played in the first half, as much as they dominated, they've got to use that as fuel now in the second half to go uh, and try and get an equaliser and then... A winner. Aberdeen can't play worse than that. At least I don't think they can. So Aberdeen should be better in the second half. You would imagine Barry Robson will change something, whether it's tactical, whether it's personnel, um, quickly, because that was defective. And it was just, I mean, it's the first time I've seen Aberdeen in the flesh this season, but that performance was turgid. So you're expecting them to get better. For St Mirren, they've got to just keep plugging away, but the, the big thing for St Mirren is when they do create opportunities, that they, they really do have to take them. There's no point in dominating a game if you're not going to um, have that final piece of the jigsaw, and that's what St Mirren need to do. But it, it's, I mean, it's talk about a sucker punch. Liam completely cursed it, of course, in his commentary. <laughs> And the, the, the long ball can be an effective tactic if it's part of an overall approach to the game, I suppose, and you're mixing things up. But it was all Aberdeen yeah. were doing, isn't it? I mean, the, the, at no point was, from what I saw from listening to you guys, did they actually try to play any football in that half? No, it was very ineffective. And when the balls are going up, Mayowski's reasonably tall, but he's not going to beat Alex Gorgic and Richard Taylor uh, to, to balls that are in the air. If you're going to go long and if St. Bernard are pressing high and you've got reasonable possession and you want to stick it in behind for Duke's pace, fine. But we've not seen that because they've not managed to have secure, safe possession to be able to play that pass. The balls that have been going long have been kind of rushed balls and panic balls because they've not they've not put their foot in the ball once in the game, Aberdeen, to try and gain a bit of composure. I mean, you've got players like Shinny and um, Clarkson in the middle of the pitch who are both very capable on the ball. You expect that they would have more of a grip of the game, but they've not, and they've bypassed the midfield uh, and just gone up to the front two, who really, you know, you, you wouldn't criticise them because they've had no service, really, uh, to be able to do anything with it. Defensively, I think it's probably the, the biggest problem for Aberdeen because whenever a ball's coming into the box, they look, I mean, you're just thinking that they're going to either get an effort on goal or score goals, and Greg Kilty's not tall, but he's... No. he's had two free headers in the middle of the six yard box. So there's something not quite clicking for Aberdeen, uh, and I'd expect that Barry Robson will be having pretty stern words in there at half time. Willie, you would imagine, would you, despite the fact they're leaving, that Barry Robson will have that concern, that he will be looking to affect the game in a way that will see them being more competitive in the second half? Yeah, and, and I am. I'm really feeling Stephen's pain. Um, Richard, you know, going through the Aberdeen deficiencies there, which I, I wholly, wholeheartedly agree with. Um, and, and Barry, you know, what, what do you do? I think you, you try to get a little bit more control in midfield, but the back three have been all over the place. Um, you, you know, they, they, they have not shown any calmness at all in, in, in defending and dealing with uh, the front three of uh, St Murn, and that's got to improve. The midfield has got to show a bit more calmness and a bit more creativity. Um, you just can't be launching that ball forward. It, 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 there's no point in doing it the way they are doing it just now because it, they're not trying to get it in behind. They're just launching yeah. big high ball forward. No use for Majorski, no use for Duke. 
dreadful first half performance. And as Stephen says, I think Aberdeen can't play any worse than that. So that's a bad news for St. Man. Right, I'll get back to you in just a moment to do quickly to Stephen because Hearts have uh, done something pretty dramatic at half time here. Well, they have the mid three substitutions. Clearly, what Stephen Maysmith was watching and Frankie McAvoy was watching was the exact same as what I was monitoring from up here. So, three subs Liam Boyce, Cammy Devlin, and Nathaniel Atkinson will come on. Yutaro Oda, Toby Civic, who I have to say is not a centre midfield player, preferring playing as a centre half. He's off, as is Odell Ophaya. So, three changes for Hearts. Stephen Maysmith, what the big response? Wow, uh, three changes at half time for Hearts. Back to Paisley then, live second half commentary. St Mirren nil, Aberdeen won, as we will be joined, Willie, Stephen and Liam. Yeah, no changes for either team here, slightly surprising, perhaps when it comes to Aberdeen, but maybe the goal changed the thinking of Barry Robson at the break, Johnny Hayes the last to make his way onto the pitch, and it will be St Mirren who get things underway at the start of this second half, going right to left, the black and white stripes, Aberdeen all in red with gold flashes, and it's a long ball forward for the Dons. Gogic gives chase, gets his head onto it, nods it out to this near side. A little slip as he plays it off Miofsky. And out for a St Mirren throw in. So it's Hemming and goal for the Paisley Buddies. Fraser, Gogic, Taylor, Strain and Tanzer, Bacchus, Boyd, Munts, McMenamin, and Kilty and Olesanya for Aberdeen. It's Roos, Rubidzic, McDonald and McKenzie, Devlin and Hayes, Shinny Clarkson, Polvara, Miofsky and Lopez. And it's a throw-in for Saints on this near side, midway inside their own half, to be taken by Richard Taylor. Pulls it down this near side, cleared by Rubidzic, up into the air, off the head of Duke. Can't find Miofsky, comes to Taylor again, left-footed, long ball, looking to spring the Aberdeen defence. McMenamin has it, left-hand side of the box, low ball, looking for Olesanya, it was behind him. It almost fell to Kilty, and Aberdeen clear, run about the edge of the six-yard line, and out of play, it goes... I think for a throw-in down on this near side for St Mirren in an attacking position. Johnny Hayes does really well to cover over there, but it was a brilliant ball from Taylor into the channel. McMenamin doing really well, get the cut back. It was meant for all Usana, but then Greg Kilty, it was behind him, and Kilty was arriving just to tap at home, probably, had it not been for the intervention of Johnny Hayes. Long thrown into the box by Gogic. Devlin gets two headers onto it and then clears, preventing the corner. Duke will chase. Marcus Fraser favourite though he gets there, left with the ball up and under. Down this near side, Devlin beats Gogic to it. There's Clarkson for Aberdeen. Just two on to it. Duke challenging with Taylor. Taylor though, for St Mirren, works to the right for the centre circle for Strain to Bacchus. And back to Ryan Strain to Bacchus. Right footed switch of play out to this left hand side. St Mirren leaving it back into their stride here. Tanzer's cross ball headed away by McKenzie. Only as far as Strain, takes a touch, rolls it to the right of the box. Chance here for McMenamin, his efforts blocked. Makes back to Strain again, right-footed cross ball in, right through to Roos who holds on. And it remains St Mirren nil, Aberdeen once a couple of minutes into the second half. And St Mirren getting into their stride early in the piece here in the second period. Yeah, they started the way they left off uh, in the first half, haven't they? Putting Aberdeen under pressure, playing these little dink balls in behind and the Don's defence not dealing with them. You, you know, that cross come short there was easily dealt with uh, from Kel Roos in goal. But, you know, again, Aberdeen really struggling to get any foothold in this game and still looking, you know, really fragile in terms of the confidence. Yeah, well, this defence won't have played terribly often together. In the match scenario, Mackenzie, Rubidic and McDonald. Duke picks up down the left-hand side for Aberdeen, attacking the St Mirren byline, he has it, gets the cross in, Miofsky looking for it, his eyes were on the ball, but it's a diving header away by Taylor, and as far as Polvara, here's Clarkson, bending it into the box, half away, Devlin picks it up at the edge of the area, can't find Polvara, he puts it straight to Kilty, who rolls it back though, as Devlin slides in and prevents Tanzer's ball from getting down the line, and it goes out for a St Mirren throw-in on this near side, 1-0 Aberdeen. At least Aberdeen getting a cross into the box more than they managed in the first half. Yeah, it was dealt with well by Taylor. He's got this throw in for Saints on this near side, flicked on by Tanzer. And right through to McDonald for Aberdeen on the halfway line. Clarkson with the up and under with the left foot. Fraser underneath it. Saints skipper. It's off Clarkson's head and then Devlin trying to control. Devlin goes down, no free kick, hooks it forward. Gogic will pick it up. It's all very scrappy again down there. Skogic looks up right-footed, looking to try and play it into the path over McKenzie of McMenamin. 
Mackenzie's there, he finds Hayes, he's under pressure. Mackenzie's gone down, no free kick. Ball played forward to Lasagna. McDonald just nicks it away from him. Kept in play down that right-hand side by Conor McMenamin. Low ball to the right angle of the box for Strain. Strain looking to find space to cross, and it comes off Hayes. Cleared by McDonald, then rifled towards goal, spilled and in! Submit and equalise! Greg Kilty on the rebound! Kilaroos makes a mess of it! And St Mirren level! Early in the second half through Kilty! St Mirren won! Aberdeen won! Well, it was a fantastic hit from Keanu Bacchus at the edge of the box. Poor goalkeeping from Kelleris. Spills it out. Greg Kilty was just waiting to smash it high into the roof of the net. Game on. He's followed it in well, though, hasn't he, Kilty? You know, he's, uh, he's anticipated, anticipated it coming off of uh, Kelleris. You're right. It's a huge error from the Aberdeen goalkeeper. You know, it's low. It goes down. He should be able to... Uh, He's not going to take it and, and hold on to it. He's, He's got, got to parry it sideways. Parry it sideways. Yeah, yeah. It's out the way. It comes off his chest. It just fell, falls perfectly for Kilty. He rifles it into the back of the net. Guy says St. Mern deserve it. Offside. They're checking, They're, for the, They're checking for a possible offside here. In the build up to that, Aberdeen preparing to take centre, though, in the anticipation that the goal is going to be given. James McGarry down there, the New Zealand international who they brought on, looks as though he's being ready to come onto the pitch. Hayes was late coming back out for the second half, so John Beaton just waiting for confirmation from Ewan Anderson, the VAR, that St Mirren are indeed level in this game, and they'll feel they deserve to be at least level in the match. Can't take this long for an offside. Well, the old semi-automated system they've got working in the UEFA competitions just now works really, really quickly. Oh. He's, John Beaton's oh. walking back towards the Aberdeen box as he oh. continues to speak to Ewan Anderson. He makes the sign on the TV. Oh, and sorry. it's been ruled out. That's incredible. No goal for St Mirren and Aberdeen continue to lead this football match. It's not for an offside though. He's brought it away back to the left-hand side. It's a foul in the build-up then. Deary me. Johnny Hayes coming off, and on comes McGarry. So it's the Aberdeen supporters, will you celebrate as if they've scored? Yeah. Effectively have in many ways. Well, you know, when things are going for you, they're certainly going for Aberdeen uh, this afternoon. I uh, haven't a clue what that's for. Um, hopefully we get a little bit of information on what the free kick was uh, given for. It seems quite a bit before the, the, the goal was scored. We thought perhaps it was offside. It isn't offside, it's well out some, what, 30-odd yards out, the, the free kick has been given. Um, so Aberdeen, you know, have rode their luck, and certainly uh, everything is going for them this afternoon with that goal getting chopped off. Well, it's been a pretty remarkable game. McGarry comes on, he impressed when he came on against Hacken on Thursday night. Not sure if it's, it can be put down to a European hangover for Aberdeen, given that was their first European game of the season. But something, there's something wrong with the performance today for sure. Many things wrong with it. And St Mirren, sometimes if it's not your day, it's not your day. Well, they've still got plenty of time. They've had the ball in the back of the net twice. Yeah, the first one wasn't quite as dramatic as that one, though. You no. expected the flag to go up for that one. Uh, for Bacchus, as uh, the aforementioned Aussie goes down on the far side, wanting a free kick. It's going to be an Aberdeen throw in level with their own with the St Mirren penalty spot. And Gary, who's just on, is over it. And he just bowls it back to Jack McKenzie. McKenzie on the turn to McDonald. Oh, it's a dreadful ball by McDonald. Gives it straight to Lasagna. He's driving forward now. Lasagna up against Rubicic. Now he's one on one with the keeper. Lasagna is saved by Roos. Then it bounces off Rubicic and goes behind for the St. Mirren corner. He's got to score, Liam. He's got to score. I mean, his pace was brilliant. He did everything right. Everything right. He's one on one with the goalkeeper. All he's got to do is pick his spot and he hits the goalkeeper's legs. It's a great save, don't get me wrong, but in that situation, you really have to score. He's got to lift it, is he not? He's got to show. Dink, the dink was on. Uh, yeah, yeah, give it a bit of air, put it, put it high. It, Roos comes out. He goes low, Roos as well, so it's on for uh, the striker to give it a little bit of air. Big chance. In comes the Simmering corner, it's way too deep though, and it's going to skip away from Richard Taylor and out for a throw in on this near side. I tell you who's breathing a massive sigh to leave Willie, and that's Keller Roos, because that error from him as he spilled it to Kilty 
is uh, chopped or, or wiped from the, the memory bank. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a decent save, but he, he shouldn't have a chance of making a save uh, like that. The, the only thing is, Olesandia, he's that quick, isn't he, that he maybe needs to just steady himself a little bit, take a little bit off the pace and show more composure in front of goal and take the goalkeeper out completely. He just drives it with force very low. And I think it's a relatively easy save for the Aberdeen goalkeeper. So Roos dodges a bullet with the goal that was chopped off. And Angus McDonald dodges one as Roos saves from Olesanya. Aberdeen are going to make a double change here. Jamie McGrath and uh, Richard Jensen are coming on, I think, by the looks of things for the Dons. Barry Robson will be concerned, but he's seeing even though his team continues to somehow lead this match. In comes the free kick for St Mirren, headed by an Aberdeen player, back towards his own goalkeeper, who holds on under pressure. And he's gone down hurt, Killer Roos. At least he stayed down. Two changes for Aberdeen, and there's no surprise. No, definitely no surprise. The performance so far has been really, really poor. Yeah, they've but... been riding their luck, that's to say, the very least. I mean, as far as Jensen's concerned, I, I believe he's left, left footed uh, uh, centre back. Yes, yeah. So that, that, would, that would be McKenzie, or um, Rubicic could go to the, the centre. But then it still leaves you with two left footed uh, centre backs on. So I think it's probably McKenzie who's looked. Uh, you, you could take any of the three of them off, to be perfectly honest. Uh, they, they've been poor throughout. Um, you, you know, and it's, it's been a really disappointing performance from Aberdeen yeah you, you could say the European uh, game has had an effect on them but I think that's letting them off lightly it is McKenzie he's coming off and Aberdeen's new number five we'll get a debut he has been playing Richard Jensen he's made five appearances in the Polish top flight for Gornik Zabja who Aberdeen have signed him from Finland international and he replaces McKenzie and Jamie McGrath is going to replace Dante Pulvara, former St Mirren player, top scorer here a few seasons ago. He was on loan at Dundee United last term. So he has been back here in opposition colours as he's booed back on by the Stand St Mirren up. supporters. <laughs> Stand up. And John McGinn was booed yeah. by Hibs fans the other Incredible. night, so if that happens, yeah. anyone's getting booed. It's McGrath to Devlin, flicking it towards Duke inside the St Mirren box. Gogic gets there now. Miovsky loses out, he's going down, he's not getting a free kick, Scott Tanzer clears for Saints, and now it's with McMenamin left of the centre circle, sweeps it out to the right for Strain, 1-0 Aberdeen, 0-0 at Dens, it remains, Olisanya on the right for St Mirren, he really should have equalised, short ball back to Strain, controls with the undersole, up against McGarry, forced back the way, and then field to Bacchus, Bacchus out to Strain, to Bacchus, back to Strain, brilliantly done, into the box, it's Strain, to the byline, pulls it back, it's going to be a handball, it's down, handball, yes, penalty St Mirren, and finally they're going to get their chance for the leveller. It was absolutely brilliant play, it really was from St Mirren out on that right hand side, a couple of one-twos, Ryan Strain driving to the by byline, cuts it back, and from where we are, which is quite a distance, it looked fairly obvious, John Beaton's much closer than us, points to the spot immediately. It's the groan from the Saints oh, fans as the <laughs> VAR check, check goes on. I think they're going to be successful this time though. Greg Kilty's got the ball as he waits to take the penalty for Saints. Of course, Mark O'Hara would normally take the spot kicks. He's out injured just now, the club captain. But this is an opportunity for St Mirren. To equalise. Still, the check goes on though. You do begin to wonder the longer these checks go on as to what kind of decision the referee's going to end up coming to. As he walks away from it. Red Kilty's made to wait some more. We got two penalties submitted against Aberdeen last season here. The Don's only visit, 3 1 submitted and it finished. You would think if it's clear and it hits his, his arm, then it is a penalty. You Unless think, it comes well, off another part of his body. Um, because he's just thrown, I think it was Angus McDonald, was it? Just threw his body at it. Uh, it looked as though it had a, a, an arm, but we're quite far away from it. Not a great angle here. And we still wait. The wait goes on. Greg Kilty stands. Keller Roos, the Aberdeen keeper, talking to John Beaton. And uh, penalty is awarded. Confirmed. Took them a while. Yeah, normally does, but... A big, big chance for St. Mirren now. Yeah, I mean, they've spurred they some massive to, yeah, chances have today. Huge chances, Liam. Two goals chopped off as well, but they deserve to be at least level with Aberdeen. Big moment this. 
Greg Kilty, just before the hour mark, right footed penalty, goal! 1-1! One, one. Stephen Robinson celebrates, as does Kilty, as do the Saints players and supporters. Kelarus guesses wrongly, and Kilty finds the net. St Mirren won, Aberdeen won, and you can't say that they don't deserve. They 100% deserve it. They 100% deserve it, and it's a really cool penalty from Greg Kilty. You're right, Kelarus. Gambles goes the wrong way. Kelty stroking at home. You just wonder why it took VR so long to make that decision. I saw a lot of replay of it. It's, it's, it's plain. You know, Obvious. McDonald that throws his arms out. Um, you know the ball. The, the, the ball's cut back from the byline. Looked to me as though it was uh, pretty much straightforward decision. The referee got it right, and VAR took perhaps a little bit long in making their mind up. Well, they like to go back and check yeah. other things yeah. before the actual incident, but well, obviously even that's... still, yeah, I mean, it was one thing that was a bit of a gripe last season was the time it was taking to make decisions. Um, and we're hoping this season it can improve the time it takes. So Barry Robson made the changes. That looked a nasty one, Liam. Was that Jensen? There. Jensen going in. Not sure who the St Mern player is, but that looked a really rash challenge from the Aberdeen centre-back. Well, red cards were peppered across this fixture last season. Aberdeen lost Anthony Stewart, who was the club captain then, not involved at all today. And uh, the Saints player who was down, I think, was it McMenamin? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. He's back on his feet. It's going to be an Aberdeen throw-in, it wasn't even a foul. So just beyond the hour, and it's one apiece now in Paisley. Nil nil it remains at Dens. Here come Aberdeen, McGarry, low ball across, looking for Miyovsky, cut out brilliantly by Richard Taylor. Well, if that equaliser doesn't wake an Aberdeen up, nothing will. Yeah, good defending there from Taylor, though, wasn't it? You, you know, getting his body, making sure that he's in front of Majowski there. That was a dangerous cross coming in. He had to deal with it, and he dealt with it excellently. Corner to be taken by Clarkson. Right in front of the Aberdeen supporters, bending it in towards the penalty spot. Saints head away pretty comfortably. It drops to McGarry, and his effort down into the ground screws well wide, and it remains Saints 1, Dons 1 here in Paisley. Yeah, the St Mirren crowd have got a massive lift from that there. They were as exasperated as anyone else in the stadium at the scoreline. But St Mirren now back level and they'll really well push to try and get this winner. Goal kick then for Saints. Zach Hemming will take right foot it. It's a long one. Across the halfway line it goes. Underneath it is Rubicic, his header. Out to the left finds McGarry, his header forward will go out for a Saints throw in. Remember, the prize for St Mirren is to go two points clear at the top of the Scottish Premiership. Not bad. That's the only incentive they require. Here is Tanzer, rolls it into the Aberdeen box for Alessania. Low ball back out wide left, first time cross, ball comes towards the back post. Jensen's there, still alive, Alessania heads up into the air, Roos punches away. Shinny tries to clear it, McGrath with a cushion header, gives it straight back to St Mirren, but Jensen clears. The breakthrough, the deadlock has been broken at Dens Park. Stephen Cragen. Well, Liam, I have to say, it's probably gone against the run of play. The second half, Hearts have been excellent, the substitutions have worked. They've had impetus, have been on the front foot, but the goal is game for Dundee. That was a short ball in midfield played by Denham. He tried to play it back into Kai Rose. It was short. Xander Clark was out of his box because he had taken the free kick initially. He'd given it to Denham. He then played a short pass to Kai Rose. Xander Clark scrambling, trying to get back. Luke McCowan just gets it out of his feet. Left foot lifts it over the top of Xander Clark and it lands in the back of the net. And Tony Doherty as it stand is potentially on the brink of getting his first three points as a Scottish Premiership manager. Dundee won, Hodge now. There's still plenty of time to go. St Mirren tried to push Aberdeen again here. Cross comes in, flicked away by McGarry, and then last high over the bar by Ryan Strain, I think it was. And that will be a goal kick. Again, Aberdeen, Aberdeen, one -one. Aberdeen at sixes and sevens, dealing with crossballs. They really are. Strain, it was a difficult chance to take. He goes for the power and puts it high over the bar. But when the initial cross comes in, you always think that St Mirren are going to be in the end of it. But it's even just dealing with the build-up play. Rubicic there has shown no composure whatsoever. He's just launched the ball out to, you know, for the throw. And if he takes a little bit more time, a little bit more composure, gets it down, plays it up the park, and allows his defence to get up the park a little bit. But 
I think St Mirren have been excellent. Be brilliant performance. Stephen Robinson will be more than pleased with what uh, he's seen so far. The only disappointing thing from his point of view is that they're not in the lead. Well, McMenamin's done well. Flicks it out to the right-hand side for Ryan Strain. Looks up right football forward. Blocked by the chest of Jensen. Shinny out to the left. Given away by McGarry. Bacchus given away by him as well, though. McGarry finds Clarkson. Long ball forward. Looking for the ineffective Duke, really. And then Duke, as they're coming together with Marcus Fraser over on the far side. John Beaton goes across to... How's that not things out. Yeah, I thought Duke was a standard yellow card there. He's avoided it. Strange refereeing. Free kick to St Mirren. And Duke was just frustrated there. And Willie, he's, I mean, he's, he's not been in a game at all by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this season you're talking about. He, he yeah. hasn't started the season well at all. Duke, uh, he's had very few um, opportunities. I suppose the Celtic game when he gets in behind uh, Carter Vickers is, is, is probably, um, you, you know, where you saw him at his best. Um, but he's, he's been largely anonymous in most of the games he's played. And he's got so much to offer as well in terms of his, uh, his pace and his directness. But, you know, when you, if you don't have control of the game and you're not, you know, being able to thread balls uh, through, good balls through for him, then. You know, he needs that service. If he doesn't get the service, then he's not going to produce anything. 25 minutes to play here. One apiece. 1-0 Dundee against Hearts. Luke McCowan with the goal there. Kilty cancelling out the fortuitous Hayes goal from the spot. As uh, Rubicic is back to his keeper. And it was a dangerous one because McMenamin was lurking in behind the defence there. Here's a chance for Kilty down the left-hand side of the byline. It's the cross ball in, half away. And Jensen completes the clearance up towards Dukes. And Mirren will win it back once more. I mean, they're utterly rampant in this game. As Strain goes back to Bacchus, to the right for McMenim, and he can't quite keep it in play. Saints won, Aberdeen won. It's been a brilliant St Mirren performance. As much as we've talked about Aberdeen not being good, it's important to kind of reference the fact that St Mirren have been superb here today. Really, really good. Kept going at it. They went the goal behind. Obviously, really disappointing given how well they were playing in the game, but their reaction has been excellent in this second half. Jensen's long ball. There's Miofsky, a little layoff to Shinny. Shinny driving into a little bit of space. Support arriving now, left and right, rolls it left in the box for Miofsky, who takes a touch, his cross, easily cut out by Marcus Fraser though. Breaks back kindly for Miofsky, low ball, there's Duke down by the byline and then on the touchline it's McGrath sweeps it back into the six yard area where it's clear, Devlin was trying to get him in the act as he did in Sweden on Thursday as it goes out for a throw into Aberdeen on the far side, level with the Saints penalty spot. Brilliant defending from Tanza, following Devlin all the way in there to make the clearance. Ball's played back to Angus McDonald. Looks up at the Saints box, lifts the ball in, but it's easy for Zach Hemming, who's going to launch this forward quickly, looking to try and get McMenamin involved, but it's cut out by McDonald, who finds Jensen, who finds McGarry over in the far side, goes out for a Simmerin throw, and Cardine Insan's a reporter, and that's oh, gone Aberdeen's way. I thought it was a Simmerin throw. Cardine can bring us a bit more detail as to why that Greg Kilty goal was ruled out before he equalised from the penalty spot. Yes, just in case any of our listeners are wondering why, and indeed the panel here, because we were a bit flummoxed as well. Uh, it was an offside uh, decision against Olusanya in the build-up, so it wasn't uh, a foul in the build-up, wasn't offside uh, for Kilty himself, an earlier offside in the build-up against Toyosi Olusanya. Solves the mystery. There you go. Aberdeen, though, were breached not too long after that, having been let off the hook. Angus McDonald with a handball, Kilty smashing home the penalty. Here's Bacchus for Saints. It's one apiece. Dundee leading Hearts 1 0 at Dens. Still loads of time left for one of these teams to go on and win it. And once again, it's looking like it would be St. Mirren who would be picking up all three points. The fancy they can get in behind again against this dodgy Aberdeen defence. It's a handball by Jimmy McGrath, surely there. The referee's happy with it though. Saints have it, Strain to Kilty, rolls it out to the right-hand side, and then to Strain, level the 18, his cross is blocked though, and then launched forward by Marcus Fraser with a left foot. Underneath it is Megari Aberdeen of a man down. Yeah, I think when the cross came in, it just caught his head, so 
John beaten right to stop the play. It's a head knock. It's like Shinny. Game Shinny, yeah. A couple of changes coming here for Saints, Mandron and Grieve. Be interesting to see who he takes off here in that yeah, case. Very, very positive from Stephen Robinson, bringing on two strikers. Yeah, does he leave Olisanya on? Well, Olisanya's caused a lot of problems today. He really has. Getting in behind. He's actually for a smaller guy. Um, he's held the ball oh, he's up at times. He is coming off, is he? Yeah. So, Mandron will replace him. But there is another striker coming on in Alex Greed, who scored that winning goal against Hibs at Easter Road on week one of the Premiership campaign. Kilty. Kilty, he's had an excellent game as well, hasn't he? He's been yeah. outstanding. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's had a really good game. So, first changes by Stephen Robinson. Uh, Willie, 20 odd minutes to go. What are you thinking? I think you take the draw, don't you? You go back up the road and you have a huge sigh of relief that it hasn't been uh, worse than that, the result. Um, you know, maybe Barry Robson's thinking <laughs> otherwise, but, you know, I think if you if you take a look at the game, the way it's went, uh, the, the good fortune that Aberdeen have, uh, have got out of it, then I, I, I think that they've got to be more than happy with the draw as far as... Uh, McDonald passed <laughs> it back to his keeper with Grieve. Almost able to pounce on it I mean I mean, I'm not I don't even, know if his head's swimming or what but Angus McDonald's had a shocker here I'm not even thinking that he's going to pass it back to his goalkeeper in that situation Liam that's why I'm still talking but uh, he makes that decision and that, that uh, is kind of an example of the poor decision making that Aberdeen throughout the team have made this afternoon Simirin throwing to be taken by Gogic Look at that. short I mean, ball under no pressure it's Taken on by Strain, Gogic back to Strain, whips the cross in, it's deep to the back post, Grieve almost got there, and came through Devlin, and away by McGrath on this near side. One all in Paisley. Two Simmering players collide, but three kicks been given against Duke, who is uh, yellow carded. Looked like they both just collided with each other, I don't know whether Duke pushed uh, one of them into the other. Yeah, they, uh, they pushed them. Right. He, he got away with the one at the other side of the park, he certainly deserved the yellow card there, and um, you know, he's holding his head. In disbelief, I can assure you it was a push and the referee made the right decision. But, you know, just getting back, simple things like St. Martin get a throw in over the far side or Barry Robson's getting booked again. No, it's not Barry. I'm very sorry. Steve Barry. Agnew's assistant. Steve Agnew. Yeah. Well, they're taking turns in. Um, but it's a simple throw in over there and, and St. Martin get easy possession. That's happened three, four time times. Time and time yeah, again. Yeah. Long ball, Saints to the edge of the Aberdeen box, headed away by Shinney. Bounces off McGarry, comes off Fraser, it's not a great ball, comes to McGarry again, but nicked off him by the ever-impressive Ryan Strain. McDonald's clearance is cut out by McMenamin, but it breaks to McGrath. Miofsky with a little layoff looking for Leighton Clarkson, another who's just not in this game at all. Here's Taylor. And then Shinny's challenge wins it back for Aberdeen. Duke has it in the near side. He steps in field. Looking for someone to make a mo bit of movement down the far side. Duke takes it right across the pitch and passes it eventually to Jensen. Flip ball towards McGarry. Lovely touch away from Strain. Comes forward and rolls it to the overlapping Duke down the left. It's most involved in the game Duke's been. And he's won the corner as well. 1-1 here in Paisley. Aberdeen corner. Dundee lead Hearts 1-0 in the other game he's they been, played today. He's been largely anonymous as Duke this afternoon. That was probably his best involvement so far in the game. It's not before time, Stephen. Uh, uh, he's looked a wee bit disinterested yeah, for me. definitely. He hasn't shown the same desire that uh, we've seen from him last season. 17 to play. Leighton Clarkson with the corner. In it comes. Comes off a St Mirren head. And then the corner prevented somehow. A combination of Tanzer and Gogic put it out for an Aberdeen throw in on this near side. Uh, Rubicic is going to leave this for Devlin, about level with the St Mirren 18, I think, or maybe a yard or two further forward than that. And it's Nicky Devlin who's over it. Of course, this is a new Aberdeen side. A lot of these players being integrated into the team can be challenging to get that going quickly. It's a poor throw in from Devlin away by Tanzer, but. Breaks to McGrath, the Devlin goes back towards Jamie McGrath, he's had it nicked off him by McMenamin, he's now driving across halfway. Grieve desperately trying to get up to support this attack. McMenamin taking on Shinny down this near side. Shinny closing him down. McMenamin does get the cross in with the right as he switched sides. 
cleared by Aberdeen. And then Shinney picks it up, looking for Miofsky. Touch on to Taylor, claims came off the hand. Referee beaten, says it came off the chest. As Taylor plays on, you've got to play it to the whistle. As Taylor plays it out to Tanzer, cut out by Clarkson. Roos prevents the corner. Saints one, Aberdeen one, 16 left. I think it was a good guess by the referee there. I don't see how he could possibly see that. <laughs> uh, there was bodies in front of him. I, he hadn't a clear view of it. Um, but anyway, he's given it. Uh, no harm done. Um, and it's a case, I think, Aberdeen maybe just hanging on and hoping that they can get something in the break. Uh, but a very, very good performance so far from uh, St Mirren. You, you can understand why they're sitting here. They're looking to go top of the table. And if they do get uh, that... that that, that goal that would take them up there then it would be thoroughly deserved took fouled by Tanzer though down below us free kick Aberdeen level with the edge of the centre circle in the Saints half Leighton Clarkson over at about five or six yards from this near side touchline he can deliver he can he's seen precious little of the ball this afternoon though the Aberdeen number 10 he takes the free kick with the right foot hanging it to the 18 yard line headed away by Mandron breaks back to Clarkson angles the ball in looking for Jensen the back end of the box but it's a good header away there by McMenamins. and another he's had an excellent game a difficult picking a man of the match for St Mirren today here's Mandron stretching his legs across halfway down the right hand side Grieve trying desperately to stay onside he's found him Grieve on the right foot scores so simple as they slice Aberdeen open and Alex Grieve who got the winner on match day one at Easter Road smashes it past Kelleroos the comeback is well and truly complete now St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 1 are the buddies going to the top of the division? Well it all looked so incredibly easy from a St Mirren point of view Mandron driving with it, one simple pass plays Alex Grieve clean through one with the goalkeeper makes no mistake with the finish low and hard across Kelly Roos and you have to say thoroughly deserved yeah but without doubt but the room that Mandron got there to just gallop forward what is he's gone 60, 70 yards yeah. perhaps and the pass through I think that it's late in Clarkson if, he, if he's not back there I, I think Greaves offside um, but at the same time Clarkson's back there playing him offside and what a strike as well magnificent strike you know wasn't by but you've got to give Stephen goal. Robinson massive credit because yeah. he makes a substitution he wants to go and win the match he brings on Grieve and Mandron and they combine to get the goal that puts St Mirren in front it's a great finish by Grieve but my goodness that was so easy for St Mirren too easy see at this stage of the game and for, for the last spells you haven't been in the game there's got to be some sense applied if, we, if Aberdeen get away with a draw today, it's a great result because they haven't taken part in the game. To throw as many players as, as they threw forward there, to leave that amount of space between the strikers and the, the, their back lot, and then it's actually Leighton Clarkson that's the, the last man trying to get back there too. It's just, you know, it's naive, naive football. He was itching in trouble down that far side of Simon and looked for another goal here. There will be an Aberdeen throw in eventually. They've simply wanted it more. The attitude's been spot on. Everything, from a similar point of view, has been spot on today. Yeah, and they've played good football, football with it. I mean, I said before the game that opposition teams do not want to come here to Paisley to play St Mirren. And St Mirren have been by far, far and away the better side. Aberdeen have found it difficult. And uh, you've got to just give all the plaudits to this St Mirren side. Well, Aberdeen have a Europa League playoff second leg to come on Thursday if they can get through that tie by the way Duke came off replaced by Shaden Morris in the wake of the goal if they can win that they're into a Europa League and they're going to have a top seed the likes of Liverpool Bayer Leverkusen are in there West Ham the Conference League champions you know I mean that is going to be a really challenging competition to be in if Aberdeen do eventually go into the Europa League, the Conference League will be challenging as well. But if this is the kind of performance they're putting in after one European match this season, then that's got to be a serious worry for the Dons fans who are watching this. As good as Samirin have been today, and they have been, and Aberdeen have been as poor as Samirin have been good. Yeah, I can't remember 
watch it as poor an Aberdeen performance, to be honest with you, Liam. McGrath taken down by Grieve, free kick given for Aberdeen, about level with the St Mirren 18 on this near side. So 2-1 to St Mirren. As it stands, they will be two points clear at the top of the Premiership tonight. And uh, they are 11 minutes plus stoppages away from that. Clarkson will take the free kick, right footed. Just a yard or two from this near side touchline. It's a poor delivery and it's away by strain and out for a throw in down by the corner flag on this near side. Yeah, that was a poor one. I expect much better from Leighton Clarkson in that situation. That's uh, an opportunity to put St. Murren under pressure and it was just wasted. Throw in then, Nicky Devlin. Long ball coming into the box. St. Murren want to make a, a change. In fact, they're going to make the change now by the looks of things. And Lloyd Munts, who we saw more of the ball, I think it's fair to say, in the first half than he has in the second. He's going to be replaced by James Bolton, Tommo. Yeah, I mean, Munz has uh, worked incredibly hard. I think Bolton's more of a centre-half. I don't know how they're going to... Maybe Gogic will come in to anchor the, the midfield. Bolton will go in where Gogic has been at centre-half. Just a more defensive-minded player coming onto the pitch. Try and see out his last ten minutes. On comes Bolton, straight into the box to defend. A possible long throw from Nicky Devlin here down in this near side. And Aberdeen trying to attack the goal to our right. Into the box it comes, away by Gogic. McGrath pinches it back, darts into the box. Little chip is off a St Mirren defender. Breaks to Grieve, but it's pinched back by Devlin. Alex Grieve's goal at Easter Road on match day one was also from a counter-attack. St Mirren have got that in the locker. Yeah, they do. Uh, Grieve's, you know, his goal return's been decent for St Mirren. He doesn't get a lot of games. He doesn't start a lot of games, but St Mirren have good options in forward areas. But whenever he comes on, he always has an impact. Zitch down the line, cut out by Taylor. It's pulled something there. His uh, left leg, he had a little feel of the hamstring. As that goes out for a Don's throw in. Devlin to take. Saints 2, Aberdeen 1 here. Dundee leading Hearts 1 0 as well. Nine minutes left here in Paisley. Moves it to Devlin, he gives it straight to Gogic. He is dancing away from two challenges, keeping it in play as well. Wiggins Clarkson steps in field. Gogic with the angled Wrong ball pass. straight to Jensen, but his header was straight to Strain. Looking for the break of the ball, and then it's cleared over there by Angus McDonald. Yeah, Gogic just went for the kind of more difficult of passes he had a square pass in the midfield that would have kept the counter attack going he carried away didn't he he did because of his he was getting excited he thought he had the 70 yard diagonal in the locker it wasn't there he does a good job for St Mirren as well doesn't he he does and this is where he's good as well because they've obviously brought on you know Bolton at centre half and Gogic can go into the middle of the pitch he'll sometimes play games as a midfielder for St Mirren but it's good to have that versatility and he gives you that protection in front of the defenders. Uh, he was always the, the midfield player, wasn't he? At Hamilton, yeah. he was at Hibs as well. Him here on loan. But he, he's now primarily playing at centre back, and that's when he plays for his country too. Shinny goes down under the challenge of Bacchus. Taylor sliding in on Morris. Strain, and then Clarkson gets there and lofts it forward. Miofsky will chase after it. There's the header away by Simmerin. Shinny keeps it alive for Aberdeen. Simmerin claim high boot. McGarry plays it short to Clarkson and back to McGarry every single Aberdeen player when they've been on the ball today looks panic stricken well, it's because also the, McGarry can't keep it in play it's out for a Saints throw the pressure that St Mirren yeah. are putting them under when they're on the ball is incredible the work rate from this St Mirren team has been phenomenal so they've no time on the ball but you'd expect players like Clarkson and McGrath to be able, be able to deal with that no I agreed I agreed that they've been put under pressure but you know, the touch hasn't been there either, Stephen. Whenever yeah. they've had the opportunity, you know, a lot of heavy touches um, from the, the, the players in red this afternoon. You expect better from them, particularly, you know, likes of Clarkson and, uh, and Shinny, you know, even Tovara in the, in the first half, not particularly great. McGrath for Aberdeen on this near side and closed down by Gogic. Back to Devlin, forward to Morris. Morris in field to Shinny. Shinny for Devlin, forward to Clarkson, to Morris on the near side. Aberdeen passing the ball about more than they have in the whole match, but they can't get up the pitch. Clarkson struggling to keep it in play, just about managed to do it. Morris back to Devlin, low ball forward to Shinny. 
Shinny on the turn, looking for a free kick and not getting it. Here comes Marcus Fraser for Saints into the centre circle. So we're in six minutes, just over that of the 90 left. Here they come with Ryan Strain down the right-hand side. And then back to Bacchus. He's quietly gone about his business today. He and Strain were heavily involved in the move that led to the Saints penalty, that led to the equaliser. They've had the ball in the net four times today, St Mirren. Only two have counted. Shinny wins the throw-in on the far side. Midway inside his own half, he's going to leave it to Jensen. A difficult debut for the Finn, who's looked as shaky as everyone else in red today. Then we're Dundee leading Hearts by a goal to nil at Dens Park. The other game being played this afternoon in the Premiership. Here's Morris, it's away from Tanzer. Moving forward, over. He's only overcooked that, but he's found McGrath on the right hand side of the Saints box. And he slips as he tries to cross. Allows Taylor in to clear. And now Gogic has it. Gogic's driving away from McGrath. Brilliant from Alex Gogic. Then through the legs, he loses it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he's got to release the pass. <laughs> he's got to. Clarkson looking for Morris and not finding yeah, it. He's got it. Go behind the goal kick. He's done the, the hard bit. And then again, he's just got a wee bit excited uh, and should have played it infield. And, and John Bean just decided he's not going to give any fouls. No. He's had a period there of about 10 minutes or so where challenges have been going on. A lot of them, yeah, not 100% certain that they're free kicks, but there must be <laughs> at least a few of them that they deserve the, the whistle to go. But no, nah, he's just decided, just let's get on with this game. St Mirren in the as it stands table sitting proudly at the top of the Premiership by two points clear of Celtic and Motherwell Aberdeen would be joint second bottom with St Johnston and only Hibs behind them after three matches and it could be important come the end of the season St Mirren would be eight clear of Aberdeen after just three games and that in itself is a potentially huge gap at this point for the campaign Ryan Flynn the veteran comes on to replace Conor McMenamin. But even just putting eight points between the two clubs is a Yeah, it's a lot a to catch up, Liam. Moment, isn't it? It's a lot to catch up. I mean, it's still very early, as we said. You'd expect Aberdeen to get better. If they don't get better, then it's going to be a long old season for Willie. Considering the money well, they've spent on this squad. Uh, I mean, they're spending big, big transfer fees right now. You say that with a bit of joy in your voice, uh, Stephen. It's going to be a long season for me. I said, if, if they don't improve, William. Flynn coming on again just to kind of try and see out this game. Not long left now. He uses experience in the middle of the pitch to just try and waste down the time. Yeah, three and a half of the 90 left. You know, when you add in the European games as well, the strain that's going to be put on this Aberdeen side. I, I, I mean, I, I would suggest, Willie, really, you would be very concerned with what you've seen here today. Yeah, you so consider it, the number of games they're going to have. Yeah, it's, it's been poor today. They, 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 haven't, they, they haven't performed at all to a level that's acceptable. Um, you know, it looked as though they were going to get away with it. Uh, the good fortune was going uh, uh, for them, but you know, St. Mirren have put in an excellent uh, 90 minutes or so and look as though they're going to take all three points. Seven and a half thousand combo inside the. Yeah, it's great to see. It's great to see the fans turning out. Obviously, Aberdeen bringing a great support as well, but it really is a good time to be a yeah, it's all over the place, and he's going to be booked for a challenging Mandron. I think the referee can let Mandron continue he should have done. Oh, why is he blowing his whistle there? I have no idea, but it helps St Mirren because they can just waste a bit of time down in this corner now with this free kick. However, they were kind of away. The advantage would have seen St Mirren Mandron and driving towards uh, the byline. Yes. Plenty, plenty of bodies in there. A big well. opportunity to finish it completely, yep. I would suggest. Yeah, yeah. Aberdeen staring at their second defeat in three matches at the start of this season. They lost to Celtic last time out in the an inspiring draw at Ammon Vale in week one. As uh, Ryan Strain needs to take this free kick, right footed towards the back post. It's beaten everyone, goal kick. 88 minutes on the clock. Barry Robson want more from his players down there. I'm not sure they're listening to him today. It's going to be a goal kick for the Dons. You have two minutes plus stoppages to try and salvage something from this afternoon, which has been pretty miserable for them. Those supporters who've made the long journey down here this Sunday afternoon have been shortchanged big time by their team. 
The Semenon fans loving life right now. Rumors it's dreadful touch. And then he's just fouled. No, he's well, he fouled Ryan Flynn. Well, he says he's died. Yeah, so he's anyway, died. it's out for a throw in. Yeah, but, but before that, I mean, what's he doing? A Rubicic? Uh-huh. I don't know. What was he doing when he was trying to uh, deal with Mandarin getting down the uh, the, 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 the right uh, back area there? Right? Just no composure whatsoever. Long ball forward, bouncing. McDonald left it for a split second. Grieve didn't, and that kind of, although it's gone out of play, that kind of sums up the two teams in microcosm there. McDonald just waited, the ball bounced. Grieve probably knew he wasn't getting there, but he still charged it down anyway, just in case throwing Aberdeen deep inside their own half. Simmerin leading, we're in the final minute of the 90 here. Foul throw. Who does it? Yeah, foul throw. He has He's a having shocker. a shocker, this guy. He, was it Livingston game he get took off as well? He, he decided that he was just going to forget about the ball and just try to take players out, and he gets substituted. He, he kind of has these moments where he just kind of loses all composure that he's got, although he hasn't shown too much composure this afternoon, but it's all seemed to be going totally out the window now. I mean, he's a young man, he's not uh, a young star. He's a young man, he's 23. Eight minutes, by the way, have been added. What? <laughs> well, it's been quite a lot going on, to be fair. Lots of subs, the VAR checks, as the throw-in comes into the box. And Aberdeen let it bounce a couple of times and there's an opportunity for Mandron, just couldn't quite dig it out. And Shinny rolls it away, Clarkson gives chase, but look again, there's a Samirin player on him. And that's gone out off Clarkson for a Samirin throw-in. They look every way, the league leaders stop up the Samirin side. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that until the final whistle goes in eight minutes' time. Fair enough. As the throw-in's taken to Mandron down by the corner flag, challenged by Jensen, and he wins the corner off McGarry. Oh, goal kick's been given. Well, it was a corner. Strange decision, that one. It's right in front of the linesman, Ross Nelson, over on that far side. Goal kick to Aberdeen, taken by Roos, short to Rubicic, then back to the keeper. Aberdeen knocking the ball about deep inside their own half when they need the ball up the other end of the pitch towards Miofsky on the turn. Can't find his teammates, and we're in, win it back again. And here they try forward with Mandron to Bacchus. Oh, over hit. Fair pass. And out it goes for the goal kick. Again, though, you know, Aberdeen giving the yeah. ball away, gifting possession to St. Mirren. I mean, it's all too easy for St. Mirren, really. They're not having, they're not having to work to get the ball back, they're just giving you the ball back. No, individually very poor. And, you know, the teamwork has been non existent as well. You know, lacking composure throughout and, and, and lacking. You know, decent touch of the ball, just holding it up. Majofsky just has to hold that up in that occasion, and it's a, another really heavy touch. Samirin looked like a team, Aberdeen looked like a bunch of individuals who've only just been introduced. And that's what Stephen Robinson's achieved here at Samirin, to some real effect as well. I'm not sure the Saints fans would have been too happy when Stephen Craig had mentioned Stephen Robinson for the Hibs job no. earlier but you can see why he would be courted by other clubs 2-1 to St Mirren, 1-0 to Dundee here, last season starting fourth sides as it stands both being beaten here as it goes out for a throw into Saints on this near side and Taylor in no hurry to take as he lets it a wry smile at Barry Robson who's not happy with the time he's taking Two and a half of the eight that have been added have been played. Throwing down the line, flicked on by Mandron. McGrath gets something onto it. Devlin with a header, can't find Shinny. Bacchus wins it. Grieve chases it down towards the corner flag. He looks happy just to hold it up down there. There's still five minutes to play, and he's won the throw off Rubitic. You don't have to do anything else, do you, really? No. You've got the upper hand. Grieve runs in behind again. He's right on the corner flag, just hold it in there, try to get another throw in. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to take the long throw in. I think you would be tempted just to keep it yeah. out into the I corner. I would say it would be advisable to just keep it in the corner. Yeah, as much as Aberdeen don't look like scoring, St Mirren won't want to offer them any encouragement. David Gogic does throw it into the box, Devlin half away, and then eventually swept clear by Clarkson. The header forward by Fraser, it's going to come back towards Miofsky. Here goes the ground, no free kick. Gogic is there to knock it back to his keeper. Miofsky still asking the question. Barry Robson not happy. 
as Zach Hemming clears. Long ball. Rubicic with the header. McDonald's behind him. He clears under pressure from Grieve. Bacchus with the header this time. Devlin has it on this near side. Flicked on with a long ball by Miofsky towards Morris. Gogic is there. Bouncing ball. Falls to Taylor. Who goes down. No free kick. Saints play on. Miofsky's tackle on this near side on Flynn. And it's out for a Sibner and throw. 2-1 the lead. And oh. the edge ever closer to Look. top spot. A lot of aggression out there from uh, Superman. A lot of good play, a lot of aggression, a lot of belief. Yeah. I would suggest that uh, even although things looked as though they were going against them, um, at, at, at certain points in this game, the belief was still there that they could turn it round, and they have certainly done that. Ball hoisted forward by Aberdeen. Goggett's underneath it. Grieve gets the header, but Mandron couldn't control. And it's now with McDonald who rolls it to the left hand side for Jensen. Well, there's time, there's hope for Aberdeen. They've got three and a half minutes. 2 1 down. Jensen's ball finds Clarkson. He can't control it though. It's been that kind of day for them. Headed away by Taylor. Rubizic hoofs it with the right foot up towards Jensen on the far side. He wins the header. Magari going after it on the far side. And he just passes it straight out of the pitch. Yeah, kind of sums up Aberdeen's day, that. Uh, <laughs> really poor. And you know, St. Martin, as much as they've been brilliant, um, Aberdeen, I said it earlier on, this performance level will not be accepted by the supporters or their manager. This is this is as bad, if not worse, than anything that was served up under Jim Goodwin and Stephen Glass. Put it that way. Yeah. So McDonald knocks it forward, looking for Miofsky, headed away by Bolton. Two and a half minutes left. It is Devlin getting it from McGrath on the near side. Aberdeen looking for an equaliser which would be completely unjust on St Mirren. It's Morris, he's got the cross ball in. Miofsky attacks it. Saints get it away, McGarry can't control. Left-hand side of the penalty area, he's on to the ball for Clarkson. Blocked by Gogic, the Aberdeen fans claim that was by a hand. McDonald so gives chase. Anyway. Over on the left-hand side of the area, he rolls it back to Jensen. And he goes back to his keeper, because he's being hounded by Keanu Bacchus. Back with Roos. Two minutes left. St Mirren 2, Aberdeen 1. It's all over at Dens. Dundee have beaten Hearts 1-0. Long ball for Aberdeen, headed away by Taylor. And there's Rubicic. Sliding in his grave. That just epitomises everything that St Mirren are all about. The work rate is incredible. It really is. And it's been no trouble. Checking they're checking the handball, by the way. Oh, I thought it was outside the box. It was, it was definitely sliding, um, you know, outside the box it was a great block contact it was yeah I mean he's throwing his body at it whether it's at the arm or not it was Gogic wasn't it that yeah. uh, was kind of attracting it well, down yeah Tom would reckon it was maybe just outside the box I thought it was yeah just from first unit again no monitors here so we don't have the luxury of a replay but we shall see Gogic is saying it kind of hit him high up on his chest the shoulder rather than the arm <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course it would is he going to <laughs> <laughs> you know, hurt my <laughs> <laughs> My arm ref, sorry, I have to admit it. <laughs> There's been a few VAR checks this afternoon here in Paisley. Full time, Dundee one hearts nil. St. Mirren Great leading 2 for 1. Dundee, that. Yeah, Huge first win of the season him. in the league. Difficult, you see, I've, I've got a little replay of it here, but difficult. There's bodies in front. It's blasted at me, it goes low to ground, um, but from, you know, the, the. Hold on, hold on, I think he's coming over to have a look at it. Have a look at it. Well, John Beaton wants to have a look at it himself at Aberdeen about to get out of jail here. Surely not. I mean, surely not. John Beaton comes over to the main stand where the monitor is, right in front of the St Mirren supporters. Is he about to award Aberdeen a penalty? Bojan Miofsky standing on the penalty spot. Waiting in anticipation. It's, it's, there's been plenty of drama in this game when it comes to the VAR. A few of the players are trying to get a look over John Beaton's shoulder. He's seen enough, the referee, I think. No, oh, he's having one last look. Still he looks. He's still talking to Ewan Anderson, the VAR, for this game. Big moment coming in here. Now he's back on the pitch. Penalty. I think he's going to give it. I think he's going to give it. He has. Oh, my God. Aberdeen penalty. Wow. Wow, it's incredible. Well, it hasn't been taken yet, but if this goes in... Stephen Robinson will be struggling to come up with answers because his team's been outstanding. 
but Aberdeen have a penalty and we're in time added on top of the added time so here. So it clearly was in the box then as well. Well, there's going to be a bit of a delay here, a bit of gamesmanship, I would suggest. The Mirren players doing their laces up right in front of the penalty <laughs> spot. Yeah. Gogic still saying it didn't happen in the arm. Well, Bojan Miovsky has the ball in his hand. Aberdeen have actually got a really good penalty record going back over the last few years. They've only missed two of their last 43 penalties. Bojan Miovsky with a chance right in front of the Aberdeen supporters to salvage an unlikely point left footed and he does right down the middle and somehow from somewhere Aberdeen are going to take a point from Paisley the St Mirren players crestfallen little wonder St Mirren 2 Aberdeen 2 yeah he just drilled it right down the middle isn't he I, I don't know what the goalkeeper Hemming is out he's all over the place speaking to he's maybe the, trying to save his officials. off his line <laughs> he's, well if he was it should be getting checked anyway ended up in the back of the net and uh, you know if it finishes with a, a point for Aberdeen then I think they can you know admit, and I'm sure that Barry Robson <laughs> a double touch wow wow here we go what's double touch he slipped. He's, that's the only way he can do that, surely. <laughs> surely he not. did slip. He did surely slip. not. Yeah, he did slip. Oh, my word. We've had it all this afternoon. Well, this will be a first for me, William. I have never seen the old double touch. No. It, 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 it does slip as he goes to take it. <laughs> does he get a retake or is it done? <laughs> Can't see it from this angle. Uh, too many bodies in front. We've got a little monitor here. Um, but from the angle that I'm seeing, uh, it's difficult to tell. But <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, that was cheers, brilliant. Really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Really. I'm not very good at a VAR. I'm saying we've not got, we don't have monitors here, Billy. Really. Yeah, goal's been given. Oh, has it? So Miovsky can have a second go at celebrating. <laughs> We're going to have a split in BBC Radio Scotland shortly. Stay with us. When we do that, FM and medium wave will split. Miovsky celebrates. I don't know why he's felt the need to go over to the Simmerin fans on the far side. In the opposite stand, but he has done. Things are being thrown at him as well. A dramatic conclusion of the game here. Simmerin 2, Aberdeen 2, confirmed. Bogic has been booked. Or was it Henning? No, it was Henning. I mean, he's furious because he was convinced it was a double touch. I mean, I don't know why uh, John Beaton doesn't come to the monitor to look at it himself and make his own mind up. He's taking the advice of Ian Anderson, but anyway, how depressing. Well, the Samirin fans, like Tomo, all feeling a little bit downhearted here. Kick off. I'm not sure what will be left here because we've no, did they add on 12, all that minutes. Stuff? 12 minutes has been added. I think there was about a minute left when the penalty was awarded. The ball breaks back to Kellerus, who holds on. Your requests coming up with Gary Ennis shortly after the news. We are going to be late to that because of the late conclusion to the game here in Paisley. So if that's what you're waiting for on BBC Radio Scotland on FM. This game just about finished. And then we will split the frequencies. As Clarkson knocks it forward, looking for McGrath, cut out by Gogic and out of play. It goes for a throw into Aberdeen on this near side. Two apiece. I mean, Saints are absolutely stunned. And the Aberdeen supporters stunned as well, but they were left celebrating late drama here. Miovsky's penalty after the handball by Gogic as Devlin bowls it forward and out for a throw-in. Is there still time for one last chance? I wonder. Nicky Devlin's got a throw-in on this near side. And it's about level with the edge of the D of the submitting box. Devlin takes, looking for Miovsky into the box. Oh, they claim another handball. handball. They claim again for handball in the box and sit in and get it away and out for an Aberdeen throw in on the near side <laughs> <laughs> they're going to check I'm, it yeah I'm just going home that, was a, that would end a sensational day if that's a second penalty no it's absolutely incredible you and Anderson will be looking at the replay of that just now definitely came off the sit in defender yeah. at the upper part of him I think it was Bolton wasn't it game on so that one isn't a penalty and this game surely is going to peter out in that draw now 
Devlin with the throw in down this near side towards Morris. Comes off Tanzer. Long ball by Ryan Flynn. Mandron's chasing. McDonald's the covering defender for Aberdeen. Mandron has it left hand side of the Aberdeen box. On the left foot looking for space to cross. It's down by the corner flag. Breaks off Rubicic. And out for a throw in. How much longer is this game going on for? Gogic is going to take the throw in. Level with the Aberdeen six yard line. There's still time for St Mirren. We have uh, played 14 minutes of stoppage time now. Gogic with a long throw into the box. McGrath heads it away. Only as far as Fraser and the referee blows for full time. Absolutely incredible scenes here. It ends in a draw, point apiece. But here it's four minutes past five. You've got a choice of listening on BBC Radio Scotland. You can stay with us for the reaction from the two matches this afternoon on BBC Radio Scotland. Extra digital and sounds for Sports Sound then. And on FM, we'll get you a news update followed by your requests with Gary Innes. But clearly on here, digital radio, FM, online at BBC Sports Scotland, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute.